then it is an honor for me to introduce our guest because of this program. Excuse me. Please, let's give them a hand. Firstly, our first speaker will be a man very rooted into the IT world, an award winner, the CEO of Genius IT, by name Mr. Desmond. Please, can you? Our Obroni, as you can see. Then our second speaker is a pretty lady, actually. A woman whose passion is to aid, show love, like our title, as in our team for today. Miss Lovia, Princess Tete. <laughs> okay, Princess Lovia Tete. Thirdly, he is a father, actually, of a town. Yeah, a whole town, not just a house. He's a great man and a chief. Thugby, I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce the name word. Thugby Kluje, the fourth. I first thought here of Kobankwe. And finally, excuse me. Then the fourth person is a presbyter, a proprietress, and then the CEO of Treasures Christian School, Mrs. Presbyter Irene Anuma. So, for this program, these are our guest speakers. And then, guest speakers, you are welcome. This is the house. Thank you very much. Please, let's give our secretary a hand of applause. Now, let's give our guest speakers a bigger hand of applause. So, about our guest speakers, I've gone to read a lot about them, and I know that we'll all be very happy to hear from them. Miss Princess Loya Teta is my mentor. I've known her for, like, a very long time now. I like her so blue. <laughs> okay. So we'll take our welcome address. Our welcome address is from our honorable president. Let's give her a hand. Good evening to us all. I'm so blessed and excited to see us all here this evening. Um, even before I dive more into our purpose of gathering, I want to do a little, um, as to share us up a little. Okay, so we are the She Media, and we are a group of vibrant young females who are willing to be trained into the various aspects of media, such as photography, videography, and the rest. And we have a slogan, which, I, which actually identify us. So I would want us to learn this slogan together in order for us to get to know more about the group. Isn't that a good idea? Oh, okay. Okay, so the, if I say she with your Ghana, you will respond, she is a speck. If you are confused, you can just read on my back, she is a speck. Okay, so stand for she is smart, she is prayerful, extremely intelligent, and creative. Okay, so when I say she media, 
then you say she's suspect, then you can actually break it down for us. So please, let's do this with that kind of a slight atmosphere. So when I say she media, then we move on. She media Ghana. She suspect. She media Ghana. I think the first response should be she suspect. Then the second response, we will break it down and say she is smart. She is prayerful, extremely intelligent, and creative. She media Ghana. She media Ghana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so. Good evening once again to everybody. It's great to see you all here today. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity to address you and give you a warm welcome even to everybody. We are blessed to have this moment and we, bless, and we give thanks to God for, her, for his loving kindness towards us. I would like to express a special thank you to our esteemed guest speakers, um, Tobe Kuzi. Thank you for the, the, the five. Oh, the fifth, sorry. Pardon me for that. And Presbyter Mrs. Irene Anoma, who is actually a presbyter at the Global Evangelical Church, our sweet mother. And when she holds the microphone, in fact, the walls of the church starts to shake and we all glorify our Father who is in heaven. We also have with us, uh, we want to specially thank Mrs. Princess Lovia, who is also the CEO for Love Aid Foundation. We go on to give a special thank you to Mr. Desmond, who is also the CEO for Genius IT. So it's a big honor to have such knowledgeable and influential individuals here with us today to share their variable insight and wisdom. Thank you for accepting our invitation to speak and guide us towards new beginnings and a new journey to actually maximum our full potential with a positive mindset, even in the atmosphere of love. All the participants, I really want to remind you of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31 to 32, which says that if you pay attention when you are corrected, you are wise. If you refuse to learn, you are hurting yourself. And if you accept correction, you will become wiser. Therefore, we are very delighted to have you all here with us. And we really do appreciate your willingness to seek wisdom and embrace counsel of these expertise or experts, sorry. I want to share a story at this very moment with you about a young lady who before Begin, who before gaining admission into one of the premier universities in the country had already developed much, much passion for some university degree that is related to being a, creat a creative person. That's programs that encourage original thinking, problem solving, inventiveness, and of course, enjoyment. Programs such as um, um, civil engineering, sorry, acts and others. However, due to this reason, due to this reasonable notion, which it termed as culture assimilation or custom, led to this, led to this great opposition of the view that as a female, she is fibra to work as a civil engineer, which was her dream passion. I will take that again. So I would want to share a story with you about this young female who began, who before gaining admission into one of the premier universities in the country, had already developed much passion for some university degree that is related to being a creative person. That's programs that encourage original thinking, problem solving, investiveness, and of course, enjoyment. Programs such as me and architecture or civil engineering, arts and others. However, due to this reasonable notion, which she terms as culture assimilation or custom, led to this great opposition 
on the view that as a female, she's febrile to work as a civil engineer, which was actually her dream profession. She was successfully talked out of these programs, leaving her passion for being a creative person. To cut long story short, this resilient and determined young female was and is still being empowered by the guidance of the Spirit of God and also by other extraordinary individuals who have played, who have played a spectacular role in her life and in, the, and in the society at large, for which our guest speakers are also, uh, also example of. And then, which has also enabled her to maximum her hidden her hidden potentials with a positive mindset alongside pursuing academic excellence. She reads above past experiences and on earth hidden, and on earth hidden um, treasures within her, sorry, explored the key principles of realizing and exposing and maximizing her true potential. She embarked on an exciting journey, being sponsored by the Spirit of God and the unmerited favor of God to inspire other young ones to uncover their full potential and to reach beyond the expectations of others. She served in various media team and was the media head for her campus ministry and also the live streaming um, head for the students board, the students um, chaplaincy board for you has sorry, and finally gave birth to She Media Ghana, which is a group of vibrant young ladies who are willing and being trained into the various aspects of media in a holistic manner, so that their spiritual senses will be intact, and when they display, their audience will see Jesus while serving them with also exciting pictures, mouth-watering videos, and identifying something, certain problems in the society and addressing them in any way they could. First Corinthians 10 verse um, 31 says, whatever you do, do it with all, do it all for the glory of God. Therefore, academics shouldn't be seen as a distraction. It is actually intended to prepare and mold you to appreciate the full picture. Talking about distraction, example of raw distraction is when priorities aren't set right and boundaries aren't well established. And hence, if the skillful girl falls in love with the wrong guy, and just as Proverbs 14 verse 1 states is, a wise woman builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. Evangelist Miles Moran once, once said, the devil's greatest weapon is not sin, but this, it is distraction. Therefore, lovely people of God, let's carry a mindset this evening to be inspired by our guest speaker who are coming to show more light on how to maximize your full potential with a positive mindset even in the atmosphere of love and answer any challenging and answer any any question related to the topic of discussion sorry our objective for today's product for today's program is to maximize our full potential and learn how to overcome this distractions in matters of love and even in relationship that may arise in the quest of pursuing excellence thank you so much for your time this evening and even as i have read and even if you could identify we are here to maximize our full i mean um, Full potential, sorry. As the lady that was being read, or the story of the lady that was being read, she didn't actually let the expectations of those around her shut down her dream. And she tried to press on, even on to perfection, to be where she was, despite all limitations. So if you are here, we want you to carry that mindset, the I can do spirit, that no matter what it is, I am going to bring out what God has deposited in me and nothing is bringing me down. No matter what it is, you will get there. And when you say you can, then you actually do it. And our God is backing us with his power. God bless you so much for being here. And I want you to be blessed by our speakers. Thank you.
please let's give her a mighty round of applause. That was so much from her welcome address. We should all learn that if you have the skills, there is only one thing that you need that can move you to being a great person, having purpose. Her purpose was to be creative, and she's creative. The story that she has told us, the lady is very creative. She has held on to being creative. So this evening, as we learn, I want all of us to encourage our own selves and hold on to our purpose. Because if you have purpose, no matter the distraction that comes your way, you will be able to get to where you want to get to. We will continue. It is time to hear from our speakers. Our first speaker is a presbyter of the Global Evangelical Church. She's a proprietor of Treasures, Christ Treasures Christian School. She is a CEO of the school too. She is Mrs. Presbyter Irene Anuma. Let's give her a hand of applause. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Good. Happy to see you. I'm here with my husband, Mr. Anuma. Hello. Yeah. Yes, and my last one, and now. Yes. Been married for the past 25 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know, but I'm super, super excited to be here. And I really do love young people. I, I don't know, but there's something about young people that moves me. Especially those of them who love God, who are into the things of God. I'm happy that she media is not only a speck. I heard prayerful. And that is my interest area. When I became born again as a young teenager, I became born again at the age of 16. And very shy, very timid, never believed in myself. And so when it was time to choose a ministry... I decided to join the prayer ministry because as for that one, you don't have to talk to anybody. Just come, join them. Somebody will raise prayer topic and then you all pray. Nobody will see you. And so it was very comfortable for me. It was my comfort zone. Not knowing it was very strategic. The Bible says, can a nation be born in a day? But as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her sons. He brought forth her children. And so destinies are birth at the place of prayer. You can't be at the place of prayer and remain ordinary. Uh -uh. It's not possible. So very strategic for me. What I'm doing today is as a result of the prayer altar I embraced very early in life. And so I want to encourage all of us seated here that it doesn't matter what you are doing in church or outside of church, if there's anything you can embrace as a young Christian, embrace the altar of prayer. Pray at any time. Pray in the day. Pray in the night. Pray on your way to lectures. And even as you pray, the Lord will order your steps. The Lord will order. It's been amazing. Like, this God has really, really helped us. Amen. And, and if he has done it before, he can do it again. And I want to believe that this is the beginning of what he's about to do in your life. Let me just share a little story about myself. So when I became born again and I embraced the altar or the lifestyle of prayer, I have come to realize that it has really ordered the steps of my life with regards to who to relate with what to do in life. I told you earlier, I never believed in myself. I was so timid, so shy, so much shy that even if I sit among people and I am sweating, it is difficult to move and clean my own sweat because of shyness. That was how bad it was. But this God of heaven took me and worked on me and has brought what you are seeing today out of me. And so if you are here, you never believed in yourself. There's a God in heaven 
who can, you know, he has created you, know what is in the inside of you. And so, if you embrace him and walk with him, he will be bringing things that you have no idea you can do. He will start bringing them out of your life, out of your life, bringing relevant people into your life every now and then. And by the time you close your eyes and open, you will be amazed at yourself. And so congratulations to all of us for God is about to do an amazing thing with our lives. Amen. Two so funny things happened to me when I was when I was a young lady. I'm still young though, but when I was younger, <laughs> yeah. So there was this young man in the church who we were like friends together, like friends. Everybody we were all friends. And so every now and then he gives me gifts. Honestly, I was so naive. I was, but please don't be naive. Don't let what happened to me happen to you. So the first thing he gave me was an album, a photo album with love written on it. Innocently me, I took or I collected. <laughs> and then another thing he gave was a, a perfume. He was nice, nice with the entire family. Like I thought we were just friends. Then going forward, one day he came to me and was asking me questions about another young person who was close to me. I was asking, what, what do you have between the, like what is going on between the two of you? I said, nothing. How come he's always around you? I said, how come you're always around me? How, like, why should you be asking why someone is always around me when you are always around me too? And then he, when I asked him, then he said, ah, do we all speak every year? Yeah. No. no. Okay, so let me say it and interpret. He said, ah, come on, yeah. Then I was surprised. He said, ah, but you don't, you know. I was surprised. Don't I know what? And then he was looking at me. So, so innocently, I was just receiving a gift from a nice Christian brother. I didn't know that there was anything attached to it. See, so if, if someone is giving you something, please find out, is it for free or there's something attached to it? <laughs> yeah, so this man, this young man became very offended. Very, very, so date, I've been married for 25 years, but to date, whenever he sees that I am close with someone and he knows the person, he will come and tell the person, I wanted to marry her. But she refused. She has gone to pick someone else because... And strangely, let me tell you, I think it's good to be sharing those kind of stories with you. The, the man I am married to had nothing. Zero. We started from zero. Zero, zero. Even television. We didn't have. Oh, yes. We didn't have. It was the offertory they gave us on our wedding day that we used part to go and buy television. When I was telling our young people, they thought I was telling them stories. And so one day I was looking through our things and I found the receipt. I said, yes, evidence. Evidence is the end of every, I brought it, this is it. So don't think I am just telling you a story. We didn't have television, we did not have. We started from a bed sitter. If somebody knocks like this, you run and push things under the bed and then like, then you go and open the door. That was how we started. We started with nothing. But you know what? For I know the thoughts I have for you, says yes, the Lord. Thoughts of peace, another version says thought of good and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. That is enough. That should cause you to be at peace. Once God said, me, the creator of heaven, I know the thought, and you didn't come into this world by chance. I brought you, and even as I have brought you, I know the thought I have for you. This is it. They are for good. And it doesn't matter where you are today. Be rest assured that the God of heaven has good plans and good purposes concerning. It is just a matter of time. You will get there. Hallelujah. You will get there. Amen. 
And so maximizing your full potential with a thriving mindset in an atmosphere of love is what you are looking at. Amen. They need to bring out the best out of you. There is so much God has deposited in us. So much, you have no idea. I told you my humble beginning. I told you I never knew I was like, no, I didn't know there was anything in the inside of me. But so much are the things God is bringing out every day. And I look at myself and I am amazed. And once again, I came to announce to you that where you come from doesn't matter. Your background doesn't matter. What matters most is that you are a child of God and you are in or you are on God's mind. And this God of heaven didn't bring you into this world by chance. He said he has plans for you. And that is the most important thing. And that is how come you will become what he wants you to become. Even as you follow him every step on the way. Every step on the way. So much is in us. So much. Now the God we serve is not an ordinary God. The God of heaven is not ordinary. And so he cannot create anybody who will be an ordinary creation. Every creation of God is like God. Once you are a child of God, the ability and the potential of God is in the inside of you. Everything that God carries is deposited into you. And so you cannot sit here and call yourself ordinary. No. And so it is time. See, you can decide to just close your eyes on it and die as an ordinary person. You can also decide to take it upon yourself, Ben, Irene, Anuma, to die as an ordinary person. God forbid. You take it to the altar of prayer and by the time you realize, you are beginning to manifest everything this God has put into you. Everything this God has put into you. I want us to look at the story of Ruth. A woman who became hopeless at the sight of people, yes. You've lost your husband. Your father-in-law has passed. Your brother-in-law has passed. And you know, no hope. Everything has come to an end. But this woman became the great-great-grandmother of our Lord. Can you imagine? Two of them were following Naomi. And then one was, ah, ah, it's okay. Just go back. She carried her things and left. Another person said, me, leave, you lie. I will follow you. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Where you reside, I will reside. Where you are buried, I will be buried. And because of that determination, today we are still reading about Ruth. What happens to Opa? We don't know. All we know is that she was once upon a time uh, the, the wife of one of the sons of Naomi. That's all. Whatever happens to her, we don't know. If this woman, Ruth, had decided to just agree to the, uh, what the suggestion of the, uh, the mother-in-law, she would have disappeared into oblivion just as it happened to Opa. But because she knew who she was and knew what she wanted, very specific, me, leave, you lie. I will follow, she started numbering them. I will follow you. I will go to where you are going. Your, your people are going to be my people and your God will be my God. If you don't know what you want in life, Anything will come your way and you will embrace it. Because you don't know. I, there's, there's a story in the Bible that I, I like mentioning to young people. Remember when Absalom rebelled against his father David? 
The Bible says there were some young people that followed him in, in the simplicity of their mind, not knowing what was happening. They just followed and they died the death of Absalom. The death that was meant for Absalom swallowed all of them because of lack of purpose in life. If you don't have any purpose, you are prone to anything. Anything can happen to no those station. I like speaking my dialect. Forgive me. And then, you didn't ask, where are they going? Are they going where you are going? And then you just jump. They will carry you to where they are going. At the end of the day, you have wasted your time. In fact, time crammed as you. You have wasted your time, wasted an opportunity that should have been invested. And so we need to discover our purpose and discover it early. So that you won't spend your life doing what is not necessary. What has nothing to do with your destiny. Discover your purpose very early in life. To avoid wastage of time. Because at the time you are wasting your time, opportunities will not wait. Time will not stop. Time keeps moving. Opportunities comes and goes. And so if you don't discover it early in life, by the time you realize you are far behind time. When I became born again, I became born again very early. But I had some bad friends as well. Not that I started going to church at the age of 16. I was born in I was the last born of nine children. And I was always with my mother in church. But I'm talking about being born again. Intentionally knowing what is being born again. And then going through the process. Giving my life. I remember, I still remember. I've always been saying, in this world, we have two births. The one, the first one, you have no control over it. It was the decision of your father and your mother. But the second one is your personal decision. And you cannot sit here and say, you don't remember when you became born again. It means you are not yet born again. Because it is something that you have decided. You weighed the two lives and you saw that this is better. This is what you want to do. And you chose it. Amen. That is so. When I became born again, I had friends. I had friends, and when I came back, I said, "No more friendship with those people." Bible says, "Friendship with the world is an enmity with God." Is that not it? And so, no more friendship with those people. And I took the path of God, followed diligently. I was telling some people the other day, but there was this lady in the church. She loves to pray. She loves to pray. I, 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 I'm sure she didn't even take notice of me. But anytime we go for an all night, I'll look for her just to sit around or stand around her. I don't know, but there was this admiration I had for this lady. And so, yes, I stopped moving with them. And then I followed God. Some few years ago, so let me see. But I'm 50. I was 50 last year. So if I was born again uh, at the age of 16, you can imagine. So uh, some few years ago, one of the ladies came and said, Oh, your number do? He said, A do. A jag balo. I knew that if I had gone to them at that time, they wouldn't have taken me seriously. But today, for her to come and be telling me that, I'm sure she has seen the difference. So she came out, she couldn't keep quiet. She couldn't, so she had to open her. She just said it. If you don't discover your purpose early in life, you waste your life. They have wasted their lives. Today, when you look at them, it is sad. And so, when you discover your purpose early in life, it will determine the kind of life you will live and the kind of people you should move with. You cannot be going where 
you know you need to make some sacrifices. You need to drop some people who are like loads and baggages around you. And then not get to where you are supposed to get to. Some people must leave you. If you still have your own friends, then you haven't discovered your purpose yet. The people you had in the world, you still have them as my, this person is my very close friend. It's not possible. You've not discovered your purpose yet. And so when you discover your purpose, it will determine the kind of people you move with, the kind of things you do, the sacrifices you make. It will all determine those things. And so this woman called Ruth, I'm sure knew, wanted she, knew what she wanted in life. And so had decided not to follow the, the bandwagon effect. Everybody else is doing it. What is wrong if I also do? The, the mother-in-law said, ah, your sister-in-law has left. You too, leave. She said me, I will not leave. So most of the time, we want to do everything everybody else is doing and still maintain focus. It's not possible. It's not possible. They will pull you down. They will, those things will drag you back. And so, discover your purpose, discover it, and pursue it. Hallelujah. The reason why you need to discover it because, is because destinies are hanged on your discovery. The Bible says creations are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Destinies are tied to your early discovery. Number knew that person who is not supposed to die in sin will die in sin. That person who is not supposed to die hungry will die hungry because you have refused to discover your purpose early in life. Destinies are tied. Can you imagine? But Ruth decided to go back to Moab. What would have happened to the destinies? See, the whole, the hope of the whole world was tied to her obedience to follow the mother. You think it was pleasant to leave your people, your familiar zone, and now go to somewhere you don't know with a, a, a complete frustrated mother-in-law. By your obedience to just follow, even as you discovered it, follow it passionately, Follow it foolishly because that is how it's going to seem in the eyes of people who are looking. It wouldn't make sense to them. Follow it passionately. Follow it foolishly in their eyes. They may call you names. They may mock at you. But maintain focus because remember, destinies are tied to your obedience, to follow your destiny and your assignment. Follow. Follow. Hallelujah. Can we take the scripture again? Right, so let me just, let me just take. Now, it's important to discover what you want in life. Otherwise, the world will tell you what you should do. I remember when, uh, so I said I'll be sharing most, most, most of my personal experiences. One man, when I did fashion in uh, now HTU, hopefully then, and uh, once I was in school, one man showed interest in me. He said he wanted, he was working at audit service. What to do? But you see, so because I knew what I wanted, I knew where I was going. I, I said no. At that time, it wouldn't make sense to any young person growing up. You are in school. Someone is working and said, I want to, I want to, like, I want to marry you and take care of you in school. And then you say, no, it wouldn't make sense to, to, to an ordinary young person. But I said no. I went through the process. I know what we go through when we are in school. I went through the process. 
when it is time to cry, you cry, you clean your face and you move on. Uh-huh. When you go out, it, it won't be written on you that you have cried. Uh-huh. So we went through. One day we went to, we went for a funeral at uh, Keta, and then I saw the man. I said, God, thank you. Thank you that I didn't marry this man. Because what I saw him become. I said, God, if I had agreed because of temporal pleasure and satisfaction, I would have been frustrated like that. When you discover your purpose day, it doesn't mean things are going to be rosy and easy. You will pay the price. You will cry the cry. But you will clean the tear and you will move on. That is how you are going to pave way for yourself into your destiny. Into that which God has purpose concerning your life. It wouldn't make sense to the ordinary person. But because you know who you are. And you know where God is taking you. You wouldn't want to cut corners. You wouldn't want to take shortcuts. Go through the process. Go through the process. I'm sure when they got to, they got to the, the hometown of Naomi. Yes, I think they didn't even have food to eat. That's how come they had to go, she had to go and glean. Because there was no food in. You will suffer hunger, but go through it. It was at the place of gleaning that she met Boaz. Can you imagine? If he had t- she had taken the decision to go back to Moab, she would have disappeared. A whole destiny would have been aborted. It was here that destiny was fulfilled. And so, if, it's the, if there's any price you need to pay, because this is it, this is what I need to go through. You will go through because you have now seen and known where God is taking you through. Or where God is taking you to. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Pursue it with full focus. Pursue with full focus. And then number three. Am I even mentioning numbers? Well, just be writing. Amen. The next thing you need to do is to work on yourself. Work on yourself. Work on your character. Allow the word of God to work on you. Sometimes we hear the word of God with one ear and it goes out through the other ear. And so we've been coming to church, coming to church, hearing the word of God, but when they look at us, it is difficult to see the effect of God's word in our lives. Allow the word of God to work on you. Let the word of God work on your character. Let the word of God work on the way you talk, you relate with people. When Boaz saw Ruth, he said, I have heard, I have heard all that you did to your mother-in-law, how you served, how you were obedient, respectful, always there. So whatever it is that you are doing today, people will hear. It was what he heard that gave her favor in the sight of Boaz. Work on yourself. It doesn't work like that. Work on yourself. Work on yourself. Learn it. See, you people are very privileged. Oh, this generation, you are just blessed. I was telling my teachers, I said, you, the phone you have, Kran, your university, it's a whole university. You can just decide to, to go to the university on your phone, in the comfort of your... Anything you want to learn is in your phones. Very privileged generation. Whatever you want, you need to learn. You can learn it. How to talk, you can learn. How to behave well. You, everything is learnable so easily. When we were born again, there was nobody to um, call us, talk to us. As a matter of fact, they were even fighting us because we were just so crazy. We were too extreme into the things of God. And so, the elderly in the church, 
There was nobody to, oh, do it like this. Do it like, unlike today, we want you and you are even running away from us. Can you imagine? A blessed, clap for this generation. It's a blessed generation. I'm telling you, this generation is blessed. Amen. And so work on yourself. You will never know who will be speaking on your behalf. It's important. Everything, everything you need to learn. Jagba, you, you, what, see, so uh, being the ninth of nine children, I never saw uh, my father being there for us. I only know my mother to be our everything, everything. Once a while uh, will be when my father will show up. Uh, but the old time is the way the father has. Sit down, foolish, like, like that. That was all I can say about my father. But I told myself, everything I never had growing up, my children will have. And so I took it upon myself to learn it and practice it. Learn and practice. You make mistake, you correct it, you move on. It's important. Pay the price, work on yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I'm not the only one who will be speaking, so let me just leave it here. Uh, so that I will allow the others to come. And then we will take the questions as well. But on this note, I want to wish you the very best in life. I pray for you that the God of heaven will make a way for you. It doesn't matter what you are going through today. The God of heaven who showed up for some of us in our hopelessness and in our uselessness, may he show up for each and every one of you. And may your story become bigger and better and mega than ours. God bless you. Amen. People of God, we can do better than that. I hope we are learning a lot and we are writing a lot. Please tell your friends that are around Trafalgar in this area that we are learning a lot and they should sacrifice their time and then come and listen. But if they can't, we are streaming live so they can use the link to join us live. Thank you. So our next speaker, please tell the person sitting by you our next speaker. Okay. As I said already, she's the CEO of Love Aid. I've known her personally since SGS2 for like four or five years now. That was the first time I met her. Then after that, she has been an inspiration to me. I think it's only this year that I didn't celebrate Vows Day with her. After that time, day, we are going it. <laughs> so she's. Miss Princess Lovia Tete. She's the CEO of Love Aid and she does very nice Obolo. Please let's give her a hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I'm, st I'm standing in the footsteps of our mother we just left. I think I've been inspired. I've drawn so much inspiration and motivation from her. I always say it's not easy being a woman. And people don't understand. But if you're a woman, you will understand why it's not, being, it's not easy being a woman. Because there are so many expectations as a woman. Sometimes, man, we feel everything is uh, easy. A woman has to take care of the house, manage the kids. She also has other side stuff to do, has to manage all that. And then love comes in, especially when you are the shy type and you are crashing on a guy and you want the guy to propose to you and the guy is not doing it. And sometimes you feel like, hmm, let me be the one to take the lead. And you take the lead and you are bounced. It's very painful. Or you are crashing on one guy 
Some of the sisters, you go to the extent of cooking, visiting, arranging his room in the 21st century. <laughs> We've been doing that, yes. Arranging his room. And at the end of the day, you are expecting him to propose to you and he doesn't propose to you. He proposes to your friend. <laughs> and you don't understand it. So we are, we are saying the theme is maximizing your potential with a thriving, I'm trying to look at the mentality, is it mentality? A thriving mindset for the skillful girl in love, right? In an atmosphere of love. So I think before we entered, I had some definitions of love, and all that, some of the expectations we want to see in love. One thing I'll say is that coming on this earth, love is just one area. And most of the times, we focus more on the love, and we miss our priorities in life. Yes. We see women who are so much in true, so much focused, then when love comes their way, they miss out on everything. Like everything, every book should be closed. <laughs> Let me focus on love because sometimes we define love in the eyes of people when we should be love. If God is love, then we are also love. But most of the times, especially for we ladies, we always expect to get that value from the opposite sex. You expect someone to tell you, I love you, you are beautiful, um, all the nice, nice words you've been hearing. You have beautiful eyes. You have sexy lips. You, you, you want to get validated by the opposite sex before you know who you truly are. But I know some people in this room are going to fight me over this. And this thing has metamorphosed into problems about we women, our rights, uh, we want. We are always fighting for our rights. When it's in scriptures, God gave us our rights, rights from creation. We have that inherent right. And I always say that you do not have to ask or fight for your rights. You already possess it, so you leave it as an example. You become it as an example. So when you, when you know your rights, okay, your inherent rights, you are able to maximize your potential because you are not intimidated by anyone. You are not intimidated whether there is a male at your workplace. All you know is that this is my right and I am living it. These are my potentials. These are the things I can do. So let me get those expertise. Let me get good at it. So that at the end of the day, I can contribute something towards society, contribute something towards my family. I want to use the story of Esther. You know, the story of Esther is very, very interesting. And sometimes, some of us, excuse me to say, you don't have the skills, but I want to go out there. You are not preparing yourself, but you have so much expectation. You have so many expectations. And sometimes, when people are chosen over you, you don't understand. But deep within your heart, you know that you don't have that expertise. You don't have the, the skill. There's a difference between having the potential and leaving the potential and maximizing it. If you know you are a great singer, you don't practice, how would you be good at what you say you have a potential in? If you say you are a teacher and you don't practice, you are not able to, how do I say it? Share knowledge with people. You are not able to go in there for you to teach and someone the feedback is how people become experts in the field we are teaching. For example, Mr. Kichi, he's into the IT field. And when you look at the videos that are coming over time, people are talking about his teaching skills, the expertise or the skill they've gotten as a result of what he has taught them. Do you get it? So number one, if you have a potential, you are not practicing. You are not training yourself. You are not investing time into it. How then do you maximize it? How then do you bring the value for people to see? How then do people see that, 
Oh, okay. So this is what she actually is doing. So, oh, so this is what she's trying to say. Okay. So, for example, when I started, when I wanted to start my NGO and I was asking for help, hey! the insults, eh? Some people do de derail you. Oh, you a lady. Oh, you want to become what? A leader. You a lady. Oh, you want to start an NGO. You know, look for some better work and get married and sit somewhere. I was like, oh, wow. But let me say something. Mommy said that it's good to discover your purpose early. This was something I was praying about right from my childhood. So right from my child, I started picking up things I love to do that. Even if you don't pay me, like, I'm happy with it. When I do it, I'm always happy. So there were things I was writing down and I was praying about. If I tell you my prayer list as little as I was at five, you'll be shocked. And I've been consistent with those prayers, even till date. Because times are changing. The trends, the world is changing, and you need to adapt. If you want to adapt the worldly way, you might end up falling because your source is not the world. Your source is God. Your original source, the authentic source is God. So if there is anyone you get your first advice from or the first direction from, it should be what? God. People were discouraging me. I should forget about doing NGO. I asked for people to support me. No one was supporting me. So when I finally started um, NSS, even with Alawa, uh, Alawa uh, Alawa, I wasn't spending it. I was investing in books. I was helping people pay their school fees. I was helping people eat. I was helping. I was dashing things to people, not for face value. You wouldn't even know it's Lovia that has done it, and I'll keep quiet on it. So when my second allowance came, I was like. I prayed about it. I was like, no. There is something God is telling me and I need to have more time, invest more time to know what exactly it is. So I remembered one time I was praying. Then the name of my organization came, Love Aid Foundation. To date, people have asked me to change the name. I told them that the name didn't come from me. It came from a certain source. And I've been told never, nothing should make me change that name. Because it carries a certain identity. As a woman, you carry a certain identity. The minute you change the focus of your identity to something else, I think you are dead. You are no longer living. So I don't want to be like any woman. I want to be myself. Who God has purpose, who God has destined me to be. So when that name came, I was like, okay, I'm going to take the first step. So the first step I took was one remote village in Adakulu. Hey! That village, no light. When I went to the school, the kids were walking barefooted. Their uniforms were torn. I was weeping. I was like, God, so me, I'm privileged like this. And sometimes I cry about some things. You know, sometimes you need to move out there into communities and villages and see things for you. You see how blessed you are, yet we are not grateful. So I went there. I really wept. I was like, the water is bad. And when they post teachers, only two teachers, they always run away. So when I went, it was only two teachers. And the classroom were two touch, uh, I still remember, two touch houses. Uh, class, class, KG1 and two was in one. KG1 was facing like this. KG2 was facing like this. Class 1 was facing this way. Class 2 was facing this way. And there was no learning material. Yet, eh, the momentum and vibe the kids come to school with, there's nothing to learn, no, but just coming to the school alone makes them happy. And we did some drills, like some tests. You should see young people. These were intelligent kids. But the materials, the, that learning environment, that conducive environment wasn't there for them. So we donated the items, later came back, talked to some few organizations, they went to dash them, uh, some footwear, school bags, and later I heard that um, pencils of promise was something we kept talking about. The pencils of promise built um, a facility for them. 
I became fulfilled. Do you know, it's a blessing to see a desire come to fulfillment. God has given or deposited into all of us gifts for a particular purpose. So if you are focusing on other areas or focusing on other people and you don't build your gifts, for example, or you don't, you, you don't value your gifts, for the story of Esther, Queen Vashti, when the king sent for her, because oh, fa- she has familiarized herself with the king, so oh, okay. When the king sent for her, you know, about six, four to six uh, king's men went to call Queen Vashti. I think she didn't see the urgency of why the king was calling her, so she didn't go. Then the same kinsman, kinsman or the Enox told him that, hey, this thing Queen Vashti has done, if women get to know, they'll start disrespecting their husbands. We will not honor their husbands, so let's forget about Queen Vashti and let's go for another maiden. And a decree was sent into communities, into uh, the provinces, and then there was a man called what Mordecai. The Bible says there was a certain Jew. I like the emphasis on certain. Be that certain woman. We have men in our midst. So be that certain man. That when they said the world is going bad, there are no more good people maximizing their potential. You'll be that certain woman. You'll be that certain man. Amen. Amen. So that certain man called Mordecai. When he heard about the decree, he called his uncle's daughter, Hadassah or Esther, and told her, this is the decree that has come. And you know, scriptures lay some emphasis. They said what? Esther was fair. What skill do you have that you are investing your time, you are giving its value, so that when the world calls, at a certain time, when it's being called, they will have no one else than you to be called. What skill are you building? What value are you giving to yourself? What are the places you go to? What you want to be? Are you investing time into it? Are you reading about it? What kind of people do you make friends with? I don't really make friends. I'm good at making friends. I easily make friends. But my inner cycle, I only have four people. Four. That one, when there are emergencies, and I call this particular person, I know, oh, this person will deal with my emergency. When it comes to another issue, and I call this person, I know, as for this person, dear. So I have, and I also play a certain role in their life. Do you get it? So ask yourself, what value have I given to myself? Or what value do I want to give to the world? Let me use uh, uh, Mr. Desmond again. If Mr. Desmond hadn't practiced these IT skills, look at how many students that has graduated from the school. How many of them that are using their skills in real life situations and the results is bringing them. So we may say we, we, we all have potentials, but... It's another thing to invest time, be consistent, be practical, be realistic. Let, they're joking. Sometimes we Christians, we joke so much. We'll go to a secret place, we'll go and pray, pray, pray. Then when God gives you an opportunity because you don't have the skill, you don't have the tenacity for it, you lose it. And you come back to that same prayer room. Asking God for the same thing he has given you opportunity. My mom told me that it's like you asking God for bread. Then God gives you a bakery with an oven, with yeast, with flour, with sugar, with all the ingredients. I say, oh, my daughter, prepare your bread. Then you are standing there. You can't prepare. Because you don't have that skill. You don't have that expertise. God will not come down from heaven to come and give you the skill. He has given you the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding to get it done. Amen? Amen. So I said love is just part of the priorities. And I'm going to still use it in the story of Esther. So after all that happened, Esther found favor in the eyes of King Ahasuerus. That's how I call him. (laughs) 
So Esther found favor. In the ask me, what did she do? You remember, when other maidens were doing their things, Mordecai was preparing her. They said, you today smear these herbs. Today use this oil. Tomorrow do this. Listen, no, she was beautiful. But looking at the king, there was a certain kind of value he wanted to see. A certain kind of beauty. A certain kind of value. Will a queen be seen in this woman? When others were, hmm, it is me, though, too, so. And they were playing around. Esther was investing her time, preparing herself. What are you preparing yourself for? What are you preparing yourself for? And after the king accepted her, when the decree went against the Israelites, and God saw, and Mordecai saw that now Esther was at an opportune place. So now the Israelites can be saved through what? Esther. What did Esther do? If it's like some of us, oh, we we'll just go straight to the king, go and do our usual things. Now we see maybe he turns the king on and say whatever. But Esther prayed and fasted. She needed a certain kind of wisdom, a certain kind of understanding. So she what? Prayed and fasted. And when she put, and she told her people to also what? Pray and fast. Some of us, we are always eating. No? When they tell us to fast, we say, I have stomach ulcer. Amen. Some of us, we can't even pray for one hour. Even some of us, if they ask us to fast for three hours, you can't do it. But you see, there are certain blessings, eh? there are certain open doors. It comes with prayer, fasting. Some comes with knowledge, you reading and gaining a certain knowledge, okay? Some comes with entering into a certain atmosphere. You know there are some people, when they go for programs, the minute they pray for them or they enter into the anointing of the man of God or the altar that is built there is very serene. They receive certain kinds of blessing. So it's different level. Every area of your life requires a different set of what? Skills. It requires a different set of anointing. It requires a different set of knowledge. Sometimes you have to apply wisdom. So it's different things. So you need to get prepared. So when it was time, Esther said, this one, pa, dear, a prayer and fasting. And at the end of the day, the enemies of Israel were put away. And they became what? Victorious. They became what? Victorious. So you may have a victorious mindset, but there's another thing, leaving it. And expressing it in the way you live, in the way you think, in the your mommy said character. Vashti's character. You see, at a point her beauty won her to be with the king. At a certain point, it required character. And when you got to character, she failed. You need character to also maintain your anointing. You need character. To move to the next level. You know, some jobs saying it's not your CV. You come and sit there, those interviewing you, they want to see what. They know, oh, this, this lady, she's very intelligent. Her CV is so great. But let's find out if she has common sense. Oh, yes, people have uh, their book knowledge. But when it comes to common sense, they are bad. So they, they, they try talking to you. They, oh, then they, <laughs> the character you are exhibiting and expressing is nothing to write home about. Maybe you were the best that day, but your character failed you. Now, in the line of jobs, they are no longer looking at CV because people are lying about their CV. MS Word. Excel. They'll give you Excel sheets. You can't do anything on it. So they realize that a lot of people are lying. So they want you to express yourself. Results, they ask you, oh, have you volunteered in this place? What is your volunteer experiences? They ask, have you realized that these days, uh, empl employers, they are asking for your social media handles? Yes, now let me talk about social media. Maximizing your potential. I don't know what you use your social media for. I mean, I use mine for business. In the development work I do, 
Sometimes I sign my deals on social media, especially LinkedIn. When people are joking, you try to read trends. Hmm, what is going on? What can I do differently? How do I project myself? Some of us, we just go and read nonsense. You follow those who are saying the nonsense. And type nonsense. At the end of the day, there's something to write home about. You've wasted your time. Five hours, six hours, two hours. When you could have learned a skill on Alison, on Coursera. There are so many online platforms that has come today that you can actually learn from Maximize. You want to be a doctor. What are you learning in that field? When it comes to science, what documentaries are you watching? It's not only the prayer. You go and pray, come and work at it. So, your blessing is your prayer at work through your skills. And God will bless you. You think God loves lazy people? No. From creation, how systematic God was. God wasn't a lazy man. And what did he say in the scriptures? He said we should be what? Fruitful and multiply. So when God gives you five talents, he expects that you multiply it. And it should be very fruitful so that other people can benefit from it. If God gave you two talents, you should do something about it. You shouldn't be that bad servant when they gave you one talent. He he went to bury it. When the master came, he said, Master, you know, the talent you gave me, I wanted to keep it. So do you know what? I've kept it. And what did the master say? He said, bad and evil servant. Do you want to wait when you're about dying? Before you realize that you've not maximized your potential, I don't think so. Do you want to wait when maybe there is an opportunity and you get that? So we are going to give you this opportunity, but you require this skill. You don't have it. And as a child of God, you miss out. That is what we are doing, and the worldly people are taking up positions that belong to us. We should be taking it. Mommy says the word creation is waiting for the manifestations. Of the sons of what? God. Where is our skills? Where are we putting our virtues? Where are we putting our values? What, where are we investing our time? Please, love is important. Marriage is an achievement. It's part of But it's not the main priority. Your main priority is coming to fulfill your purpose and call on what? On earth. God has given Mr. Kitty one particular thing to come and do. Or God has designed him in a certain way to fulfill a certain purpose. Talk by is here. God has given him a certain purpose, an assignment to fulfill. So is all of us. But if you leave your purpose, go focusing. That's what most ladies will do. They say, we women, we are our own what? Enemies. But I mean, I don't believe in that. Hmm? We should focus in building each other. Let's stop fighting um, this and that when you possess it. When you own it, me, when I go for seminars, I don't preach women should go and uh, rub their shoulders with men. No. A man has his place. A woman has a place. When we join together, we make life so beautiful because all of us, our gifts are at work. Our purpose is at work. Our talents is at work. And we are complementing each other. So we are making what? This life what? A better place. Love is important. It's very good to fall in love. I'm not saying it's not good. But at what time? Don't exploit your purpose. Don't exploit your call in life because of what? Love. There is one thing I do. And I'm not a wicked person. I'm a very emotional person, but I use my head. Do you get it? And God, God always talks to us. When a thing is not going well, you are saying it's going well, but you know it's not going well. You know it's not God's call for you, or it's not God's plans for you. But you want a thing you are torn in a certain way, but at the end, man will never support you, but God doesn't work like that. There are principles and laws. And God goes by it. So, you know, even those, are, those in the world come to the Christian, don't come and take our principles and live by them. And it works for them. Then we, the Christians, rather than we are suffering. So, love is very important. We've all come from somewhere. 
I always say that sometimes, if you don't know what the negative looks like, how would you see the positive? Or how would you make the positive? Sometimes, I always say, as we are all sitting here, we, ha- we all have different paths. Because we have different, different calling. Something like a sustain, it may come to you, you can't sustain it. That's why we always need to be very prayerful. You can never, I, I always say you can never be careful enough. At a point, I was so careful and cautious, but hey, then I know I was bad, the baddest. A wolf in sheep's clothing. That, hey, that was, I was like, hey, God, this one there, this is my rib. Like the way the man would say, this is my rib. I said, oh, this one there is for me. Sen alalai. But we thank God for what? Prayers. As a woman, if you are here as a man, don't joke with prayers. In the 21st century, people bullshit prayers. But prayer is very, very powerful. It brings you into the alignment of God's word for your life. It brings, it directs you. Like, people will be like, in difficult situation, a negative situation, people are not able to come out of it, but you are able to come out of it. Sometimes you have to say, how did I do this? Sometimes when we do projects, I sit down and reflect and I say, hey, how did we get to do this? Sometimes it's prayers. And sometimes the prayers bring the trends, like sometimes it's partnership. So God, because of the prayers you've prayed, God will go and connect you like to different, different partners. People will never think you didn't see value in them, you least expected. One time I was doing one project and a friend said, love you, I'm going to send you money. And I was expecting support from other partners. At the end of the day, she gave me the highest. I stood out like, how did she get this money? How possible? Because the way she, I, I was, God. You see, sometimes help comes from the least expected place. So as someone who wants to maximize your potential, do not underrate people. Don't think this person is low and this person is high. God will surprise you. He uses the foolish things of this world to what? Oh, please, I want to hear you. Oh, I want to hear you. I can't hear you. Okay, great. So before I sit down, though there are men here, I think I'm for the ladies. I'm a bibliophile. I love reading books and getting knowledge and information. If you are on my Facebook, you know that I'm always posting about books. So this book has helped me a lot. Understanding the purpose and power of a woman. I'm always reading it. Sometimes I get my apart from here. <laughs> so every woman is written by Dr. Mouse Muro. He is good at relationship. Though sometimes people see, uh, see him very controversial, but when you sit down to understand, and we have it for men too. He has that for men, so please get it. If you want to get it, you can see me. I can get it for you. Because me, I want you to get it and read it. Hallelujah. It's not only in the science books. Oh. It's not only in the fiction. Oh. Sometimes you need knowledge. We need to know what is happening in the worlds of other people, in other civilizations. That is when you become what? Very dynamic. You have to be global. You can't be a local champion. No. Hello? Me, I, I want to be international. I don't want to be a local champion, okay? So sometimes, you don't only read from people who have written books in Ghana, in Africa. Sometimes you need to go beyond so that you know what is happening in other civilization, especially for global speakers, our traditional rulers, our development uh, workers, and all these people is very, very necessary. I want to end by telling this story. I have never had a rosy journey in life. So in university, after deciding to get first class upper, you know, then, (laughs) did I say first class upper? (laughs) Oh my goodness, first class, good, yes. After planning to get first class and I was working towards it, Everybody said the devil is a liar. I said earlier that we all have a path. A certain challenges come your way. And I, 
I started facing some challenges. I said, ah. I started asking God, me that is a child of God, me to what? Like, what have I done? And I was like, God, I, I've saved you all. I've, I've prayed. I've fasted. I've paid my tithes. I do this in church. You said I shouldn't do this. I'm not doing it. So why? I started getting, you know, people don't believe it when ladies say their lectures pester them. Worry them. Ah, uh, you don't know till it happens to you. Yes, that was my story. I became so frustrated. I was like, and if you go and report, they'll ask you where is your evidence. Where is the evidence? So second year, third year, things started becoming so difficult. Then my roommate decided to go and bring her boyfriend to come and stay in our room without my permission. Now, when I bath and I come to the room, Instead of the guy stepping out for me to dress, he will go. He will not go. He will see them watching my face. I will have to pick my things and go to the washroom. Then my roommate went to report me to her mother that me, my prayers has been worrying her. It is when she's telling that to me I pray, which is a big lie. And you know, sometimes when you are young in the university, you are naive. Mommy said it. Like you are not exposed to something. So when some things hit you, you don't know. Yeah, so the frustration sometimes I'll go to class, I'll, I'll just go off. Because here is lecture, your room that you have peace and study, things are going on. Fast forward. Final, getting to final year, there was this other lecture. Hey, that one was, see, that, oh, was it the Prince of Persia? That angel that he did good. Apostle, this one is correct, Apostle. This lecture will not let me be. When I go to class and it's time for my group to present, you will not let us present. If this man is entering in class and maybe I'm late and I'm also, about, he will tell me to stand outside. One hour, 30 minutes, two hours, I'll be standing there. Sometimes as Christians, we go through very tough times. Sometimes as ladies, sometimes as men, you go through very tough times. But it is teaching you how best, the kind of tenacity and the grace God has given you to go through some of the things. Fast forward, I thought I got second class upper. Graduation, they mean I'm a dressy. Ma shemi heel. Ma shemi gown. I bought a new earring. Me, everyone knew I didn't like makeup, but that day I did makeup. Because I thought, oh, after all, suffering all this lectures thing, during my uh, defense, this lecture came, you, you see what I'll do to you. Hey! So much frustration. Hey, my sisters, you know where they wrote my name? You see where? Second class, no way. And pass, in between. People's name were Z and things. Me, my surname is Tete. But that is where my name was. I was sitting there. We, we already, you already see your results before. And so, so I was happy. All my friends were happy. I was happy for my friends who got first class and those of us who got second class. We are all happy. Hey, second class. But I knew the results I had. My sisters. I didn't know how I climbed that stage. To go and take whatever that thing they've been giving us that nothing is written on it. And I descended. Do you know what came? I was going to commit suicide. Nothing. I said, I said suicide, nothing else. So I, I understand when people commit suicide and people are insulting them. It's a whole lot of things. It's a whole lot of incidents and things they've thought about. And at the end, they feel suicide is their final say. I got home. My, oh, my, I got back to my room with my brother and my parents. My parents slept in another room. My brother was sleeping beside me, but my, he never knew I had suicidal thoughts. I went to pick a knife. Went to my bathroom. They said, me and you today will die. And I told God that, God, I have saved you faithfully. I've done so many things. I remember so many things I do that you need to remember, and you should have honored me, but you didn't do it. Shouldn't I have gone to church? What didn't I do? I picked the knife. I was about stabbing myself. I don't know what happened, but I carried my phone to the bathhouse. 
My phone started ringing the minute I wanted to stab myself. My phone rang and it kept ringing. When I checked, it was my pastor. The phone kept ringing. So I picked and my pastor told me that that foolish thing you're about doing, you better stop it. He's waiting for me at our gate. I should step out and come. I said, no. I said, I'm tired. I don't want to serve God again. He said, no, Lord, you come out. He carried me. I roamed KUST campus like a mad person. I was crying because years of hard work, years of so much service, investment, that boyfriend to me, like I remembered God about certain things like I didn't do. That should be like a momentum, like God should see it. And, but I wept so much. But today, I thank God. I always laugh at myself that I'm a fool. The places God has taken me to. And from that pain, I have realized that the gifts God has invested in me, the value, God spends so much time molding me. So if I do that, I am being ungrateful. So as a woman, maximizing your potential one you need to be grateful for what god has given you when you realize what god has given you you start making good use of it then you become best at it that's why i don't joke with my work if you know the people around me they know me i can work uh, to 12 me i sleep around 4 a.m 3 a.m when i sleep at 8 you will see me wake up at 11 or 12 and i'm because I know where I am coming from. I know the things I have gone through. As a woman, know where you are coming from, the things you have gone through. Look at your family. I look at the generations that will benefit from my blessings. So I have a reason why I wake up to go to work. I have a reason why I do the things I do. I don't know about you, but I have a strong why I am living on earth. So also have a strong why. When you have a strong why, then you can invest the time and maximize your potentials. Thank you very much. People of God, you can do better than that. I know we have all learned a lot and we have picked a lot. But one thing I have learned is that I should have a strong why. And that strong why is the purpose we are talking about. Your purpose is the strong why. The reason that you have to wake up every day. So if you don't really understand what purpose is or why you should have purpose, the need for purpose, just put it in your mind that the reason why I wake up every morning the reason why I do the things I do. And then another thing is that we should know that whatever we are going through is a molding. You have to be molded to get there. So when I met Miss Lovia the first time, I wanted to be like her. And I just wanted to be like her in like a year or two time. So every, every time I am talking with her because I want that the following year, I want to be like Miss Lovia. Me to have organization. <laughs> me to come and stand in front of people and be talking. But then along the line, I realized that I had to go through a phase of things. I have to go through a series of things so that I can also be like Miss Lovia. I can also talk to her. And then I understood it that it was little beginnings and then you will not realize it. The first day I met Miss Lovia, it was just small talking. And it wasn't here. It was a club on campus. I was doing some small, small things for. That is it. Then gradually, gradually, I can say that by the grace of God, I am places that I don't even imagine I can be yet. <laughs> now we'll take spoken words. There's one thing I love about spoken words, especially the people that come out to speak. Because memorizing is not easy. We all know when you finish reading slide one, by the time you get to slide three, the things at one and two are already vanished. 
and <laughs> you literally have to copy everything down on your notes or your paper. You recopy the whole slide down. So like that is not easy. And the kind of things they say, how everything rhymes, it is very, very beautiful. So at this moment, I would like us all to be in that mood. And then let's hear, with a round of applause, let's welcome Teophilia. One question that has become a bother on the minds of every sister and every brother and has become a riddle which is hard to solve is what is love? Some say that love is a feeling. Others say that love is when your heart is abnormally beating by the person actually holding the sticks to the sound of their favorite tune. Some also say that love is a feeling of butterflies in one's belly. And there are some who don't believe in the existence of love. But wait, think about this. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not boast. Love does not envy. All these characteristics of love leads me to think that love is a person. A perfect person. So then, in order to solve that riddle of that question, who love is? The right question that should be asked is actually, who is love? Love is a person, a perfect person. Love is a father who will clothe you when you are in despair. Love is a deliverer. Love is a savior. And even more to mention, And amazingly, all that can be seen in just one person, Jesus, the perfect person. So if you ask me who is love, it's simple. Jesus is love. And yes, I know, don't get me wrong, God is love, but Jesus is the express image of the love of God. So, if Jesus is the exact image of the love of God and he lives in us, then we need to be an exact reflection of his love, his word being our mirror. But here's the case where we have a scattered reflection all because we reflect from broken mirrors, broken homes, broken relationships, abuse, rejection, and depression. All have affected our love's reflection. But let's go back to originality, where our love for God was never a partiality and where we are going to receive healing for our wounds and be able to cross the world, to spread the love of God without doing. This is Love Express. Thank you. People of God, let's give her a hand.
So there's one thing I have learned now, even though I'd known it for some time, she has expanded on it, that Jesus Christ is who or the definition of love. You see that a lot of explanations have been given about love and then how to handle it. But then, even in our various love lives, the stories we've heard or the experiences we've had, you see that in one way or the other, you are not really able to like do what love is. But Jesus Christ is the person who came to love us. He came to heal the people who like insulted him regardless. The people he knew that would crucify him, he came to help them. Me, let me tell you the truth. As an individual, if you do me wrong and you want me to do you, I will not do. <laughs> and we are all like that. We can, it will take so much love for you to do that. It will, it will take so much love for you to invite somebody you know that is going to betray you to come and eat with you. Do you get it? Imagine knowing that somebody will be poisoning your food tomorrow. Then you tell the person that I've cooked jollof, come and eat. It will take a lot of courage to do that. It will take a lot of love to do that. So the only definition or the real definition of love is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I'd like to introduce a very important person in our midst. See a very important person. I've realized that within the years, a lot of people see that great people are born from books or great people are not born from their mothers. But I can attest to the fact that if you are a great person, it comes from a mother or a mother figure. If you sit down to reflect about it, being a great person should be because you have a very good mother or you have a mother figure in your life that is very, very, very good or that is very, very helpful. You know that sometimes when you have issues, last, last, the person you go to is your mother. No matter your friends or the people around you, if it's over CDA, you call your mother. Even if you don't want her to know about it, you call your mother. So I want us to, with a hand of applause, welcome Miss Rita Senalo, the mother of Miss Perpetual. Please, let's give her a hand. Please, you are welcome into our midst. It will take a lot for a mother to come that coming for a program by this time of the night. That alone makes her a great person. Please, we have water at the back, so in case you need water. She media. She media. She, hey, my people. My people. She media. Please. Oh. <laughs> Please, let's start again eh? The first one, only the slogan, and then the second one, we dissect it, okay? She media, she's a spray. She media, she's smart, she's prayerful, she's extremely intelligent, and she's creative, okay? Thank you. Please, let's not forget, I'll ask again. <laughs> so we'll continue from hearing from our speakers. Our next speaker is a very great man. See, a very great man. He's a teacher. He, he, he does a lot, like plenty. The list is plenty. I'll just flip, flip, son, and then we'll just go home soon. He's a CEO of Genus IT. When, when I joined She Media, he was the person I was seeing most often. I was, I was seeing a lot of programs at his place for free junior high school students. I'm like, hey, in this time and era, 2023, the economy is hard like this. Somebody has willingly, willingly asked that his place be used or he'll be of service 
to a group of people, very young people, they are not even much. He's not going to get anything from it. These days, we want something from everything. If it does not bring money there, me in particular, I'm not doing it. That is, that is a way of love. He's being skillful in whatever he's doing by showing love. Do we get it? That is skillfully being in love. Please, with a hand of applause, let's welcome Mr. Desmond Kitu. All right, so hallelujah. Amen. 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 Sorry, I was enjoying my something. What's the name of that thing? Is it a chocolate biscuit or chocolate toffee? Yeah. So I was requesting for it when I saw people chewing the ears, and I was quite jealous. But let's clap ourselves once again for coming here tonight. And you know, I'm very happy when I see young people gather like this for knowledge. Because you see, there is something beautiful about knowledge. Knowledge has a way to refine you and even change your countenance. Do you know that? That is why most often, when you take a young person who is in the village, and that which is in a big city, one that is exposed and one that is not exposed, it's not that you in the city is more um, intelligent, but it's about the opportunities that you've got. Some of the kids that are in the villages that are not having the opportunity, you'll be, you'll be surprised. If they bring them your way, the same opportunities, they will whip you down, hands down. But that opportunity for them to also be exposed to the information that you have, they did not have it. That is the difference. Because when we were all born, our minds were empty, right? And then information was pumped into our minds. Some of you here were beaten to go to school when you were very young. There was a time that you didn't even know who you were. You were just born. You were not in a state of awareness. That is where the worst could happen to you. Are you aware of that? Do you know that there are kids to, born today, they were not born disabled, but because of the carelessness of probably the mother, the father, or a maid, or because of an accident, today they are disabled. Are you aware of that? That happened at a state where they were not aware of who they were. There was a time that when you were born, in fact, you never knew where you were born, who gave birth to you, at, okay, your mom gave birth to you. You didn't know what happened the day you were born, the dress you wore that day, okay? Who actually saved you from your mother's womb? If I ask you right now, I'm not sure you can recall any of these, your first year birthday, second year birthday, third year birthday, fourth, maybe fifth year birthday, you can't recall. The question is, what was happening to you that time? Are you getting it? Have you ever had a chance, chance to talk, think about these things? What was happening to you that time? That was a time your life would have been destroyed. There are people who could not see today because they were killed. Some, their parents killed them because they think they couldn't take care of them. But if you and I today are alive and are here strong, hearty, shouldn't give you any reason to say you are hating your parents. Because if they had really hated you, they would have killed you. At the time, they had a chance to kill you. I get in the concept. Today, you can speak good English. There was a time you were forced to learn how to speak English. There was a time you didn't like going to school. Your mom had to sacrifice for you to take you to school. Buy you dresses, get you food. Every day, day in, day out. Till today, they are still paying your school fees till now. But some of us still don't respect our parents because of something bad they did. If they should pack the bad things you did and give it back to you, none of us can take it. So I saw a skit on Facebook where uh, the mother of the woman, the, the mother of the man and then the father of the woman planned to visit them together. So when they came to their house, they decided to play back what they did to them when they were younger. So they also come back home and leave their dress anywhere they want. When they finish eating, they will litter the table intentionally. And the kids were complaining. They said, ah, well, we too, we are now kids. You are now the adults, so take care of us too now. And they were frustrated. Hallelujah. Today we're looking at the skillfulness of a girl who is in love. Okay? So it's important that we break down these components very well. Um, so I'll ask you to do something for me, all right? 
I want you to look into the face of the one beside you. Just look into his or her face. Look into his or her face. Now take out your phone. Take out your phone. Just help me do that quickly. Take out your phone. But don't unlock the phone. Don't unlock it. Just hold the phone in your hands. Now ask your partner, what do you have on that phone? But don't say it all. Just describe it. What do you have on that phone that you wouldn't want anybody to know about? <laughs> In fact, okay, you ask the partner, do you have anything on that phone that you wouldn't want anybody to know about? What was the answer? Tell us. No. Are you sure? So I can take your phone right now from you. What was her answer? She said no. Hey, you are pretending no. What's your friend's answer? She said no. Hey, really? What's the answer? No. <laughs> okay. Who, all right. So who has an, a yes answer here? Yes. Me, I have plenty. Yes. I have plenty. Yes. You see, for me, when we talk about love, I come to quench it. <laughs> so I think I'm a love quencher. All right. But then... Um, I've always been telling people around me that if I, when I get married, I want to give that to a girl first. Because I've come to like girls a lot. Aww. Yes, I want to give that to a baby girl first. Nice girl, before the boy will follow. If I can get two girls first before one boy, yeah. I'll be very happy. Because girls are adorable. Aww. They can be very annoying, but the annoyance is nice. You get the point. <laughs> So ladies are very beautiful and ladies are nice. So I handle ladies like eggs. But one thing that actually um, drives me is excellence. Okay, I always want to be excellent. Um, but it becomes very difficult to be excellent when you find yourself in an environment which is not excellent. When you are surrounded with people who have average minds, people who don't see tomorrow, they are always concerned about today. Their thinking is short term and not long term. When mommy was speaking today, I was taking plenty of notes. How many of you took notes in the class today? Good, it's important, okay? Because it's better to come for teaching service than to go for miracle service. Because the teaching service will teach you how to give yourself a miracle and sustain that miracle, all right? They say that marriage or love starts with a spark. That is when you have a feeling towards your other partner. But it goes beyond the spark. You can start the relationship, get married, but in the long run, you'd realize that it takes knowledge to sustain that and not the feeling anymore because the feeling can change. Our emotions fluctuate. So if you have to fall in love based on feelings and infatuation, then it means the love is not going to be standing forever. But if you love somebody because of um, a decision, okay, it's important. Now, love has a consequence. It has the potential to make you and unmake you. That is why if you fall in love with the wrong person, they have a great influence over you. Are you getting it? So falling in love is important. When I came earlier, I saw that we we're trying to dodge the question of love, love, love. But love is not something you should dodge. Love is good. When you find the right person around you, they can propel you into your greatness. Are you getting the concept? So the issue of love should be demystified and taught in the concept of it being good. Just like how the concept of sex has been made to look too um, bad, especially in a Christendom. That is why if you go around, um, you listen to seminars and consultants and uh, how do we call them? People who talk to you when you have issues. Counselors, they will get to tell you that a lot of marriages are getting broken because we make things of love and sex so holy that we don't want to touch it. And because we don't want to touch it, the world can do it better than us. And that is why you realize that when we get married like that, a lot of men begin to cheat because their women are too holy. So if your husband goes out there and one worldly girl catch him like that and gives him that experience that your wife cannot give you, then you realize that the man starts a new journey. Are you getting there something? Uh -huh. So the concept and the issues of love must be um, discussed into detail so that we know that these things were created by God for us to enjoy. So if we know about it very well and we know how to play the games very well, we would enjoy it. Research has shown recently that about 500,000 marriages have been broken. 
just in 2023 report from the um, statistics, Ghana census, and about 400,000 or so have been separated or so. And just imagine, is Ghana not a Christian country? And research has shown that Christian marriages are even getting broken them all. You get the concept. So it means something is not right, and we need to address some of these things. And that is why some of us have been scared, you know, hey, this thing, how will it end? You know, but then we need a lot of knowledge. So if you are going to enter into relationship and stuff like that, it means you must be very careful. My mom once told me something, and when I grew up to this stage, I got to understand. She said, your spouse is at your workplace. She kept telling us that when we were growing up. I was like, what do you mean by your spouse is at your workplace? Then when I grew up and I got to realize that if you start dating and commit to somebody when you've not discovered your purpose, the person you have committed to can prevent you from pursuing your purpose. Because the person might have fallen in love with you because of who you are and what you do at that moment. But the day you begin to discover your purpose, then things can misalign. For instance, maybe you don't want to marry a prophet or a pastor. Instead of dating a young man who is just so handsome and zealous on campus, then all of a sudden, after giving all the vows, you even did blood covenant. Then all of a sudden, he says, oh, God has called me. And you know right in your heart that you don't want to marry pastor because of fasting. What's going to happen? Your mind starts changing. Are you getting it? So when you focus to discover who you are and why you are created, and you are in the pursuit of your vision, then anyone who aligns with that vision comes your way and helps support you to achieve that vision. You get a concept? So it's important that we find our purpose. So when mommy was speaking, uh, our sister Lovia too was speaking, I was very much inspired. But me right now, I don't know, I don't know who come and talk about me too. I don't know who is here who come and talk about me. Who wants to be like me? <laughs> okay, so my job here is to come and talk to you and sensitize you on the issues of um, cyber security, okay? Especially when you are playing in this space of love. Nobody here can tell me that his heart has not turned towards somebody before. But you know, ladies can be very naive. You can be very, very naive. And that's how God created you. You are very fragile, very emotional, okay? And any guy who understands these things can play on your intelligence and get you whipped. That is why it's important that you always have knowledge. And knowledge is acquired when you expose yourself to tiny bits of information over a period of time. Over a time, it accumulates. Then when you understand and you are able to apply this knowledge, then you will say that you are wise. Are you getting it? So wisdom starts from getting knowledge, getting exposed to knowledge. And when this knowledge ex um, expands over a period and you are able to apply this knowledge properly, then it means you are becoming wise. Do you understand? That is why reading the Bible is very important because you can only be wise when you expose yourself to wise things. There is nothing that you have created that is new. There is nothing that you know that people don't know. But everything that you know comes out of the heart. And if you don't feed your heart and your mind with quality stuff, the things that come out of you are not quality. That is why if you want to be very good, you want to stand out, you want to be exceptional, then you must expose yourself to such things for a period of time. It will define you and make you stand out. Do you understand? So life is very simple. It's very, very simple. Sometimes you take too much time thinking about what we want to become, how we want to become it. Just expose yourself to something for a period of time and you would realize that it's very easy to become that. So Bible says don't be unequally yoked with what? An unbeliever. Are you getting it? Don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Everybody here has potential. Mommy spoke about potential. Our sister Lovia also spoke about potential. Potential means you have the capacity to. But the question is, can you? Everybody here has the capacity to become anything he or she wants to become. So we all have potentials. Okay? You can have a gift. But somebody can be there and train and become more gifted than you. Because the person has taken time to acquire the skills that is needed and has become exceptional. I'm a music director. I've been teaching music for over 10 years now. And trust me, I play piano too and I teach it too. So if you want to learn piano, come and see me. I'll teach you very well. I've seen people who were gifted with the voice to sing. And I've seen people who have actually learned to sing. But right now as we speak, I see people who have learned to sing, singing better than those who were gifted with singing. The difference here is consciousness, learning, practicing. Knowledge comes when you read and hear things like this. But skill comes when you practice. And there is no two ways about it. 
you can get all the knowledge you want. If you don't practice it, it becomes knowledge. Just imagine you've gone to school to learn how to swim. We go to the ocean and I drop you inside the ocean. Oh yeah, let's save ourselves. That is when you get to know that swimming is not a course you study in the classroom. <laughs> or I take you to the field, let's go and drive and I give you a book. Driving means you press the clutch small, you release it, then you press accelerator. When you are going too fast, press the brake. Are you okay? Let's take test. Good. How do you start a car? You ignite the engine. One, two, it will start. Then two, you make sure that you release the clutch. You describe all this. Okay, now we are traveling. Now the driver just collapsed. You are the one. Oh, you had first class in driving technology. Please come and drive us. That's when you realize when the car starts moving. <laughs> to control the car is a skill, not knowledge. Do you understand? That is why if you study, you must make room for practicing. Practice is so, so, so important. So as you are here on campus, you have practicals, right? You have practicals. And that's where most of us miss it. We go, we don't really learn to be practical. We just go there to come and show ourselves and go away. But the exceptionality that you want is in the act of practicing and being excellence-minded. Do you get the concept? And let me not deviate. Let me go back to my purpose of being here. Hallelujah. So thanks so much to um, She Media for the great work that they are doing. And um, any day, any time, I'll be willing to support She Media with their vision. All right. If you have started like this before, you will know if there's potential. Are you getting it? What drives a vision is not that you have plenty of money. It is when you have the dream and have the passion for the dream. You would make it happen. All right. I quite remember the first day I had to get an office for myself. I had to go and perch first. When I went to perch, I have to be useful to remain perching. <laughs> so where I was, I had to go and learn website development. Get, 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 get. Because I didn't have money to pay rent. So when I got a co-working space, I had to become program manager over there, manage their website and trade the skill for the space. So now I managed and built their website for them. And I used the space as co-working space. And then I began my school there in my NGO. There's small, small, small. Now the place has collapsed. But before it collapsed, this is where God comes in. I had to take a step of, step of faith. Got a space, went there. The place was just being built. And I entered the space. I was very young then. In, fa in fact, if you see me that time, walking into a building to ask of price, you will not mind me. So the guy who was the caretaker was like, who are you? What do you want? I said, oh, I just want to come and see the place and get to know how it looks because I want to rent it. The guy looked at me, so I took his phone and called the landlady. Thank God the landlady was not there, so she didn't see me. And she said, oh, let him go around. So we went around. I had some old tape measure, be like that. It's still in the room there. When I'm teaching graphic design, that's what I used to teach. This graphic design thing, this tape measure, I'll hang it to. It'll be in our museum one day when we become a university. As I'm here now, seeing all this, I'm just being inspired. One day, I'll have a very big place, a big campus. It's going to be a tech university. And people will come there and learn. OK, we want to grow global minds, not local minds. So if you come, me, I'll be insulting you. I'll insult you, so you'll be tired, because your mind must change. Then we, I took the tape measure up to now. I don't know the width and height of the room. Is it width and breadth? But I said, oh, let me see, Mike, Mike, let's measure, let's measure. We measured, we went around the entire building. In my heart, I know, my heart was even beating very fast because they can sack me any day. So finally, I left the place, and then just a few weeks after, I had a call. This one, do you like this place? I said, yes. I said, I don't you want to take it? I said, oh, yes. Do you have the money? No. Okay, I'll talk to the land for you. Then we just, that's how they connected me, paid half of the money, and I came in there. When I came in, when you say, ah, you hear, ah, 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 ah. One table, no TV, nothing. Nothing. I get in it. Nothing. Right now, if you go to Copilot, Microsoft AI, you type my name, Kichi Desmond. Copilot self no Desmond. And give you information about Desmond. Yes. For Chat GPT and Co, it's like their last database. I was not qualified then. <laughs> okay, so life is something. And it's very good that you guys are being exposed right now, okay? If you take this council very serious, it will cut down the errors. Mm -hmm. You don't network very well. Last I was in a meeting, they said your network reduces your network. Right? Your network reduces your network. Sometimes the things you have... Before you achieve one result, if you...
the workload would reduce. Productivity. Thank you. Do you understand? So such programs is very good for you. Always come. And when you come, always connect. Do you understand me? Always connect. Some of your employment is in the hand of somebody. Who, on your phones right now, I don't know how many of you here have the contacts of top managers and top CEOs who you check on once in a while. It helps. It is not when you need money, like people do to me. They'll be there five years, they'll not call you. When they need money, they'll call you. They now know that you are popular. No. So this is a time for you to take some of these things very, very serious. Okay? It will look like we are flexing, but we have passed this stage, and we know the pain we went through. So when we are telling you, we know what we are saying. Okay? There is no stage in life that you don't feel you are intelligent and you are wise. Everybody at every stage feels they are wise enough. So even a child, when you are telling a child not to put the hand in fire, he or she will be crying because he feels that, why don't you want him to put my hand in fire? But you know very well that the child is at risk, right? So you will never allow the child to do what? Put the hand in the fire. So today, all the things that you are doing today, after five years, you look back and see how foolish you were. Like how you saw you were foolish five years ago. So to be wise simply means that you look up to those who have passed your stage, learn from them to be wise now, before that time. Which means that you can achieve what they have achieved five years' time, today. Do you understand? That is why today if you're on campus and they say don't do this and don't do that, you will not take the advice because of their saying it. You look at those who have passed through the system and the one who is telling you and why he is telling you because your mistake may not have a second chance for repentance. Yours may be deadly. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Beautiful. So we are in an age of technology where technology is driving everything that we do from production to knowledge acquisition, everything, right? So you can be in a house right now and still be in lectures. So technology is uh, a system, okay, and a tool for solving problems. And it has become an engine for which we even express our emotions, love and affection to each other. So the technologies that we engage today have two sides. It will help you to make it or break you. Amen. So we have a lot of technologies that we use today, um, like the tools we use for social media, which include things like um, these online platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and blah, 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 blah. And you know, surprisingly, in Africa here, we've been introduced to technology, especially social media, from the point of entertainment. Are you getting it? So that is what we know. We use these tools for entertainment just posting yourself and doing skit and blah, blah, blah. Some of us don't even know how to monetize these things, so you just do them. Some of you, the things you've posted right now, you'll be surprised. 10 years time, eh, it will haunt you. Eh? It will haunt you. Oh, trust me, a woman we went for a program in Accra, a one-week program, I think uh, the Internet Governance Program. One lecture from UPSA came, and they had interviews. And they said they got to the final stage, two gentlemen, very good guys, top-notch, they were very excellent. Now they want what they would use to disqualify one, right? And pick one, because now the decision is now tough. And she told them that if they want to just look for any flimsy thing to drop one, let's go to their social media handle. One was the good guy posting nice quotes and encouraging people. The other one was really Bevu. You know, he was a rascal before maybe something happened and he changed. And that was what they used. So the other guy was dropped and they picked the other one. One woman recently wanted to become a chief, a queen, and they are fighting her because of her past. You know, you go online boldly, I'm a prostitute, I am a, a hookup girl. You do all these things and now your mind will change later. One day we were going to register a company and then I took my phone, they requested for um, our team number and those stuff. So I took my phone to scroll because I didn't have the details on my uh, handy. So I said, okay, I remember I used to save my pictures automatically in my photos. So I was scrolling to about two, three years back, and oh my God, things downloaded on my phone and saved in my photos without me knowing. There was this pastor who woke up and won't go there. I getting it. So the internet never forgets. So even as you are expressing your love and stuff like that, you need to have your own personal policy. Anything that you would not be proud of, never ever send it to anybody. Are you following? 
Sometimes I can hack you to get him or hack you to get her. So she might not be the direct, you might not be the target, but I can hack you to get to her because I know she trusts you so much. Do you understand? So sometimes the way we disclose secrets is important. Do you understand? Some of you, your mobile numbers, are, your passwords are typed in your notebook on your phone. So when I ask if you have anything you don't want to, you say, oh, no. Some of you, your critical transactions you've done on websites, the account details, password, username is saved on the phone, in the browser. So if I take your phone right now and I get any site, I can just take your phone and go there. If your bank details were used to log into your bank, online banking system or something like that, some of you are just so naive, you just use the system anyhow because you have no education. It's not your fault per se. That is how I can take your phone and withdraw money. You wouldn't know because I'll use your own account. Do you understand? So you can be speaking to your friend, talking about how your mom sent you money yesterday through the bank. You mentioned Stambic Bank or Zenith Bank. And oh, and then the money she sent, and she asked me to use my phone. I didn't have to use it to help me. So maybe the hacker or the criminal is just listening. A good friend, you know. Then he said, oh, can you get your phone? I want to do something. So your trusted friend gets the phone, brings the phone, and some of you trust your friends so much. It's not her fault. She can be played to get to you. There was this young lady who killed herself at, um, what was the name? Oh, Marco Girls recently, because she went to have sex with a guy on campus, and then the video leaked. You see? And for me, I always encourage young people to always take at least a basic course in cyber security. In the physical world, if I want to contend with you and steal from you, I have to fight you physically. If you hold your purse with money, how can I get the purse from you? I have to fight you, right? snatch it from you by force, and run away. When it comes to the cyberspace, it is not like that. You will give the chance to the hacker, the thief, to steal from you effortlessly. Do you understand? If you give me your password and the username, what are you telling me to do? Free flow. Do you understand? So if you're not cyber security conscious, you can work for 10 years and everything you have saved is gone. What I'm saying is not a joke. What I'm saying is not a joke. People have killed themselves. People have high blood pressure because of this. So some security staff are there. If you don't take it very serious, they say if you are going to sleep, lock your door. You don't lock your door. They came in and stole from you and beat you on top. I'm saying that because of my own naivety some years back. You see my phone? I bought my phone twice in a week. Where I stayed, they used to tell me that this morning, when you come back home, lock your door. I said, oh, me, nobody has ever stolen me before. Nobody has, oh, it will not happen. One day, I went to Hustle, got my money, placed on the table, bought my new phone. Oh, you know, if you have a new phone, you'll be showing it very well. Got home that night, placed the phone on my bed. The money was on the table. And, you know, when you come back from work, you are very stressed. You can just go into a deep sleep. That night, I woke up. I, I dream a lot, so... I woke up and then I saw a gentleman in my room with a cutlass with a hair tied. I checked my table, the money is gone. Then the guy walked to my bed, took my phone. I said, oh God, this is my, am I dreaming? I'm not dreaming. Am I dreaming? And the guy took my phone. And then he was approaching my bag. You know, my bag contains a lot of things. So I said, no, this one there, I can't allow him. It's like as if Holy Ghost makes you to fight or something. So the guy just took my phone and then rushed out and locked me inside. Thank God I had a spare key in my bag, right? So I opened the door, came out. Then my eyes were now clear. I'm like, ah, I've been robbed. I've been robbed. That was because I was so naive. I felt nothing like that could happen. And since then till yesterday, when I sleep, eh, I can sleep and just, you know, this PTSD, they call it, or whatever it's called. Yeah, I feel I'm a big boy, but it still happens to me. I can be sleeping and just wake up as if somebody's in the room trying to steal because of the past experience. And sometimes you can be sleeping and be having um, animations playing of some of these things. It's not pleasant. So when I sleep alone in my room, it's not very exciting. Because of what? I was even told, Seth, I didn't take it very serious. Do you understand? Now, even in the afternoon, when everybody's in the house, when I want to sleep, 
I still lock the door. But you see, in the cyber space, it is not so. Your negligence will cost you more than that. You understand me? So when you are sharing your stuff online, please be very careful. If I go to your social media right now and I search your name, what will I find? If I go to Google, we don't have time. Like I would ask you to go online right now and search for your full name on Google. Maybe you can even do it whilst I'm speaking and see what Google will say about you. You can search my name. My name is right there, Kichi Desmond, K-I-T-S-I, and then Desmond, and search it and see what Google would say about me. Yeah, one of my lovely sisters at the back waving me. Hallelujah. <laughs> I get in it. And see what it says about you. Now, whenever someone hears your name, the first thing they do unconsciously, is just go to Google and type to see if this person is a good person or not. And you will not waste time for years to build a very good social media profile or online profile or presence. So these technologies that we have right now, you can use them to your advantage. Let it be your CV. Plant there things you want the world to know about you. Do you understand? Some of you, if they search for your picture, the first thing will come was when you were half naked dancing. Which serious company will want to employ a lady who is half naked online? Are you getting the concept? That is why everything you do today, you must look at the consequence 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. Now go to Facebook and see. It's as if Facebook was built for women to just become naked. It's a very serious thing. As soon as you open Facebook, all those short, short reels playing. You said that a lady is twerking the buttons up and down, up and down. Some, they open their dress up to here. And people are downloading these things onto their devices. One day, one day. When they have to decide who will lead them, they will say, you don't qualify because they know you. Are you following me? What are some of the consequences or the disadvantages of using some of these things? One is identity theft. Identity theft. Okay, so when you are online, don't share too much information about yourself to people, all right? Else these things can be used against you. It's your date of birth, your hometown, some of this information, please. Any platform that you join, make sure that you read about their privacy policy very well before you engage. Some of these platforms, they are totally independent of anything that happens to you. There was one e-commerce platform I wanted to buy from. Before I could make a purchase, I had to go and sit down. You see that privacy policy thing they've been writing, plenty like that. That we never read, eh? That's how one day eh, your money will go like that. And the privacy policy or whatever policy they have is there, covers them. They, they were saying that if you buy from our platform and the thing doesn't get to you, it is not our fault. It will not refund you nothing. So they have put systems in place to protect them against any happening. You would just jump on the platform make a purchase, and your money can just go like that. Are you getting it? So how do you check if these platforms are secured and safe for you? You must make time to do what? To read. If you don't read, you will get into trouble very soon. Amen. Amen. Number two, data breaches. Okay, data breaches. So inadequate security measures on dating apps or social media platforms can lead to what? Databases, database breaches. Some of you are so desperate for love that you have to go and join dating apps. Their names are there, you know them, right? And because of the way you show desperation for these platforms, hackers can hack these platforms and get information about you and play you. Do you understand? And play you. So when you are on these dating apps to look for love, to look for love, you must be very careful the kind of things you post there. Do you understand me? When your eye clear, you realize that the love was not a feeling. When your eye clear. Sometimes it's good to dance in the love something small until your eye clears. Just make sure that the clearing doesn't clear you too. You understand? So you must be very careful when you are engaging some of these things. Sextortion. Sextortion. When you are dating, sometimes you send your nudes and stuff across to other people. Okay? You take pictures of yourself naked. Uh, so there's this lady who, right now they are trying to battle the issue. The guy that she was dating when she was in school was a teacher. The teacher is now married and wants um, to marry the girl again also, in addition to the wife. 
Now, the guy says that the girl shouldn't go and marry anybody else because she, he has all the evidence against her. So the guy has gone to create a Facebook page. Every now and then, he will post the nude pictures of the girl just as a way of getting back to the girl. You see, you cannot tell how people will turn it tomorrow. So you don't trust people too much. You understand? So anything that you cannot be proud of, don't send it across to anybody. I took a lady's phone one day. My phone got spoiled, and I took her phone just to use the phone. Now, I just took the phone to use, right? You see, when you are doing WhatsApp, a voice call, it is all saved on the phone. When you are doing the wiring and the wireless connections, everything is saving. One day, I was playing music, and the, uh, <laughs> and the audios entered. Oh. Oh, 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 it was bad. It was so bad. Some of you even have this sex on WhatsApp, those things. They'll be saying the thing, you'll be responding to it, just to get you into the mood. Those kind of things, have you understand? Uh -huh, phone sex. Those things happen. And when you are sending these things, that phone you were sending it to might get into a wrong hand. Have you even understand what I'm trying to communicate? Yeah. So if you want to chop love, let the person come to you. So you do it in person. But you must be extra. Because people now plant things. People plant cameras. Like the girl issue I spoke about, the Marco girl stuff. There's nothing in that room that shows that she's been recorded. Sometimes when a lady is proving hard to get, guys gather, gang, plan to get you. Do you understand? Oh, yeah. You come to the room and you see a laptop open. You see a laptop just open facing the bed. And it's off. But it's working. The camera is not working. The lights on the camera is not working. But it is videoing everything. I, I'll be about. People plant things in walls. And people can really invest. Hey, if you have guys communicating, they invest to that girl like okay, them. They can go and buy a camera. There are cameras that fit in bulb. There are cameras that fit in switch. It's there. When I was in school those days, I was surprised. A guy brought a pen to the class, and the pen is a camera. While teaching was going on, this guy said, I will show you that I have everything recorded. We finished class, and because he was writing, the camera was not very stable. The pen was recording everything, both video and was taking picture shots in the class. That is why you must be extra, extra what? Careful. People don't understand why when I go out, I don't talk too much. You don't just talk too much anywhere you go to. Talking about everything, anything, anyhow. People's phones are recording. Do you understand? So as a lady, being cyber security conscious is a critical skill that you must have. So you don't lose everything that you have worked for all your life. Amen. We have catfishing. Catfishing too is a skill being used online now. People create fake profiles. So a guy can create a fake profile, use a beautiful lady there, or a lady can use a guy's picture there to bait. Are you getting it? So always make sure that you know who is behind the pictures. Last time I was called, oh, my wife just gave birth, I want money, blah, blah, blah. I said, please, before I can send you money, let's do a video call. Before I realized, the person went back to delete all the chats. And that was a chat of our caretaker in our house. He was not around. The account number was not switched. When I got back home, I asked everybody, did anyone contact you? Yes. And people even sent money. Said, when they going to see this? Hey, that's a woman who just gave birth. You feel emotional, right? But I said, I have a personal policy. Before I send money to you, I must be sure of who the money is going to. So I have to make sure that I have what it takes for me to know that it is you, personal. I said, oh, okay, if it's very difficult, why don't we do video call if you can chat me on WhatsApp? Let me see your face. And that was the end of the conversation. Do you get it? What I spoke about earlier about the video something is called, called revenge porn also. Revenge porn. So they will use your uh, stuff you've shared in the past to get back at you when things don't go well. Okay. Then phishing attacks. Phishing attacks. Um, they send you romantic messages and emails like that just to get your emotions involved. And ladies are prone to some of these things a lot. You are working in an office, you become the most vulnerable part of the system. 
The system can be so secured, but if you are so naive, you, they can pass through you to break into big systems. You understand? So you can be working in Trafalgar here, for instance, and I want to get a patient data, but you are a nurse, you are a doctor. Through you, it's very easy, because you use your phone to connect to the network over here. You understand? So there was one time I got access to database, patient database. So a patient who shouldn't be declared as HIV to the world is there if the person is HIV positive. So even our health system, we are not super secured enough. So people's uh, secret information, which should be kept confidential, is just out there. Anyhow, system that should be uh, privileged to a doctor, a nurse can have access to it. Okay? And if I've ever connected to a Wi-Fi in the premises here before, and maybe I got a new device and I come back, through just simple command prompts, you can get the password back and reconnect. And there is networking. When you get into a system, you connect to the system, any machine that is not secured, you can enter into the machine and get information from that machine. I've done it before when I was doing systems engineering. I have a lot of videos and stuff on my PC right now that I just took from people's PCs when they were browsing in the cafe. Are you getting it? So, Cybersecurity is something that all of you here should be very much interested in. If it is a one-week program, two or three weeks program, go and learn how it is done. So if you see the symptoms, you'll know this thing is looking like this. And in conclusion, in conclusion, when it comes to security, security, please don't play with it. Don't play with what? Security. Especially in the age we find ourselves. You can take a picture from here right now and one million people can see it at once. It is not like those days that it would take effort. Now, just a post. If you have one million followers, that is all. So anything that you don't want anyone to see online, please don't take it out. You shouldn't leave your phone. Don't be giving your passwords out. Your phone is your property. Your laptop is your property. Nobody should use it, especially if you have sensitive information on some of these devices. Thank you so much. Please, you can do it better. Let me see by hand those who want to be like Mr. Desmond when they grow up. <laughs> we are plenty. That was a lot about cyber security. There's one thing I've learned, and I know you've also learned, that we should read that privacy policy. Don't just scroll and go and agree. Sometimes when you want to use an app or an account, website or something, you see that the privacy policy is like very long. Recently, somebody told me that the reason why Americans are over Africans is that we don't read. An American man can use two full days to read privacy policy, but you and me, we just do agree and continue. <laughs> Then we continue, then that is all. Then we don't get the chance to read. So whatever we need to know, it's embedded inside. Sometimes maybe the app you are using, you just have to provide your bank account in some setting somewhere. When you use the account, they pay you. But because we don't read, you are not able to get that opportunity. I hope we are getting that. Please, next time you want to use an app or something, Okay, so one thing I'll say to you is this. We have a lot of um, AI platforms, right? The chat GPTs and go. These platforms, most of them are autonomous, which means that they grow. They are, um, we have, they are unsupervised. So it means they learn by themselves. The things you put there is what they take note of and use back. So some of you, you go there and put your personal stuff, the secret and stuff, rewrite it for me. All these things are there. Chat GPT, there's a way to, Set chat GPT that it shouldn't take note of your chat. You shouldn't save them. Okay, all these things are there. So if you want to um, put insensitive information, make sure you disable those features before you put it there. Because it's going to learn about you. The day they will ask questions, the same system about you, you may be shocked that things will come out. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Those of us that are using my AI on Snapchat, 
everything via you've gone to my artificial intelligence. Small so issue you reconstruct it for me. I want to tell this person this, please. Let's be careful. And with the privacy policy, let's take a very keen note. And the kind of cookies we accept online. Let's let's <laughs> Whenever you want to assess something, they say accept cookies, then you to you accept. You don't know what they are. Please let's let's try and then learn about those things. So our last and final speaker. <laughs> it means that we are ready. Please turn on to a new full page. If you if you wrote and it's halfway or it's quarter, just open a new one and write last speaker. Because we are coming to learn a lot. Just write last speaker. Then we, you start writing. If your pen is almost down, get a new one. So that you can write a lot. So with a round of applause. <laughs> let's welcome our fourth speaker. Please let's be upstanding there. Talk with Kluji the fourth. Oh, let's all. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Should I say good evening or good night? <laughs> Which one? Okay, behind every successful man, there is what? Huh? Behind every successful man. Exactly. Behind every successful woman, there is a what? A handsome man. Yes, but today I could realize when we were talking, we're just putting the things to the ladies, only the ladies. I'm for the men. <laughs> yes. All the men. Are we here? Uh-huh. So today I'm for, I'm for you. So I, it was a great session. I enjoyed all the, the speakers and whatever they have for us. I believe we've learned a lot. I'm not going to talk about anything, but just to uh, give a little uh, opening mind-opening thought on whatever they've shared earlier. So, uh, we were talking, they were talking about a lot of things, but I believe love supersedes everything. But what to do when you are in love? Yes. What to do? We are all growing up, I think we, we have discovered our purposes, our goals, and whatever we want to become in future. I guess the, the, our young lady here, uh, when they ask her now, what do you want to become? I want to be a doctor. Yes. Oh, oh girl wife, no. <laughs> so she's going to see a lot of things that uh, will marvel us. But then how to become those things that she's going to say? I think we failed to help them discover that. And... Uh, being in, the skillful girl in love, uh, you have a lot of responsibilities because you've added love to it. Yes, so you have to balance uh, your skills and who you are loving. Yes, so you want to become a tech person or a doctor, a nurse, a medical practitioner or anything. You need to balance your relationship with uh, whatsoever you want to become by communicating. I think one thing we failed in this, our journey, is that we have to communicate every bit of our journey, our dreams, our goals, with our partners. And uh, it, will be, it will not be a hindrance to them whilst you are moving on. So uh, I think there is one thing we have to take note of when we come to uh, the issues of love. Uh, the major thing is communication. That's the major thing. Okay, you are in a relationship, you are coming here, your partner is not aware of it. Oh, you keep on calling. And one thing about human being, when you are being told, okay, this is what I'm going to do, or this is where I'm going, you program yourself that at this time, at this moment, Mr. So-so and so or Mrs. So-so and so is going here. But when you fail, that's where the person becomes so, uh, 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 like a nuisance to you. No, please. I want us to get the difference that in every steps of our journey, if you are in a relationship, please, 
take, make sure that you are able to communicate every step, everything that you do. Almost, you, you decided to uh, uh, put, like, come together, understand each other, get to know each other. So when your lecturers come to you, uh, lecture for the first time, they ask of your names. Is that not it? If they don't act like, like in, in class, they ask, why? Why do, why do you think they do that? Just to create that rapport, to familiarize with you people. That's what they are trying to do. So when you decide to be in a relationship with someone or be in love with someone, it doesn't mean I, I, any, any kind of relationship, but then you have to make sure that you are, vulnerable, you are giving your vulnerability to that person, that you are going to be vulnerable in any aspect. But then you have something to achieve. That is why you are schooling. So you don't try to make things your way. I think it leads to marriage. When you are able to practice that effectively, you will be able to uh, manage your relationship, achieve your goal. And one thing too, you have to take note of where you are going and your partner. Where does he want to be? I think it's very necessary. This, this is some discussions you guys need to have together to know, okay, if I'm, uh, I want to become a footballer and you want to become a doctor, okay, how do we complement each other? How, does, well, how is, is it going to work with us? I think when you are able to get that, it's going to help you in knowing who you are with, what the person wants, the goal, and what he wants to achieve. If it's in line with what you also want to achieve, like uh, one of the speakers said, uh, gave a scenario about uh, um, what, uh, what, okay, let's, let's leave that. But then I think we have to all have in, come into one understanding in uh, our love journey in terms of what to do. And uh, we have to make sure that uh, we set boundaries for ourselves. If we are in love, please, you are still a student. Though. We have to learn. Exactly. So you have to have boundaries, the time for visiting, the time for doing the, uh, uh, the caring girlfriends and the domestic styles, the understanding girlfriends and all those styles. Yes, you have to have boundaries for that uh, and practice self-care, a good self-care, please. Uh, it's very, very, very important. You have to practice a very good self-care and uh, also find ways to combine your skills to love. I said it already. So basically, my uh, other speakers have said enough. I just came to say that, please, the men who are important, the women who are important, let's not feel so big because we are we are successful or we are women of our own please behind the story that our 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 founder she's the found yes ask her whether she's uh, there is no no man behind it please tell us please tell us oh tell us no ask 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 mr leo this uh, the 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 message that he has for us. At least, what, some two people, like some two beautiful ladies will, will go behind us and say, oh, go through for me. Yes, it's necessary. Uh, we, we, we love God, and uh, love is everywhere. Love your neighbor as yourself. So when we are talking about love, hey, please, we, we say, Togbe, but I believe in God. That's my belief, yes. So when I'm talking about God, it shouldn't sound strange to you. That's my belief. And that's what brought me so far where I am now. Assuming this position wasn't just because of tradition, but the purpose God wants me to serve my people. A reason why I'm here today and standing before you to just to deliver this brief experience that I have in my journey as being a, a traditional leader. So please, we the men too, we are very important. The women to be very important. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.
please, we can do it better. Okay. You see this, uh, you see Mr. Desmond here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have a story to tell. I think I was one of his students. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I, yes. So his, the training that he's giving young people, I, it's very, very impactful. So please, Whenever you hear Genius IT Foundation, when they are running their programs, I think I would recommend him that you go there and go and learn new skills for yourself. It will benefit. I'm using it today, and I'm being so effective. I, I true that. So, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you very much. Please, we can do it better. As the things are going, I don't want to be like Miss Lovia when I grow up again. I don't want. I really don't want to be like Miss Lovia again. Please, let me see by hands those who want to be like Mr. Desmond when they grow up. Miss Lovia herself wants to be like him, so me, I've resigned. I'll not be like you again. <laughs> I'll not be like you again. I hope we have learned a lot from what Toby has said. I told you people to like open a fresh page where you can like learn more or write down more. He said a very, very important thing that communication is key in a relationship. Even though you are being skillful in everything, communication is very, very key. And then understanding. One thing I've always said and I'll continue saying is that when you are in a relationship with someone, be a friendship relationship, a classmate relationship, a neighbor relationship, always do one thing. Do not assume. Communicate. So in a book by Michelle Obama, Becoming, she explains why we need not to assume, but then we should communicate. Maybe somebody is walking some way, or somebody's talking somehow, then I assume that it is because of me that she is walking somehow. So we are women, and then we take a lot of understanding from what other people do. So maybe I have an issue with Lady Miracle, and then she passes by, and she's walking unusually. Then I assume that, uh, so it's because I have an issue with her. That is why she's walking that way. Then it's in my mind. Then whatever I do afterwards, I do it in relation with that. After all, the other time when we had an issue, Miss Miracle was walking like this. Then years later, I do things and then our friendship breaks. Then I come to realize that maybe the day before I met her again, she had a sore or something. That was why she was walking like that. So because I was not able to communicate, I was not able to ask her, a whole line of things has been lost because of not communicating. So I think that communication is very key. So we would like to have an open forum. Just quick questions. Our vice president will help us do that. Please, let's give her a hand. I'm a Christian, hallelujah to that. Oh, hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah. Okay, so there is one thing I learned from Mr. Desmond. If that clap is for me, then you're not doing it better. Please do it better. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Our secretary and then our, uh, uh, those who have already stepped here. So briefly, if you have any question, for uh, uh, the question about the first speaker, we can relay the question to her and then when she replies, we'll send it to you. So any question at all to our speakers, please, the floor is open for questions. There is no question. Okay, please, I have a question. Okay. Oh, well, let's give her a hand of applause. Okay, so my question is actually to Mr. Desmond. Okay, so... Um, about the cyber security stuff. Yeah, so what if, like, so in the past you shared things, information that 
like right now your mind has changed and like you want to delete like some of those information is difficult to delete sometimes even after you've deleted them if it was chat the other person still has them has so what do you do so that maybe later on those and um, mistakes and those chats or pictures that will, um, it will not be used against you. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you very much. Let's clap for her for that question. So briefly, um, when you've sent me a file that I have, there's no way you can take it back for me unless I delete it. I get in it. So the best thing is to just take caution from now onwards. If you've sent anything that you've, you've done or you don't want to, or you're not proud of, the best thing to do is just stop it. I know that there are sites that you go to and you upload your picture. The ones that you've uploaded before, you don't want them to surface again anywhere. There are sites you can go to and put it there, which means that if it should surface on any social media platform, it will tell you that this picture is having a problem and cannot be um, used on the internet. You know, when you study cyber security to some extent, you can even tell if your picture should be put into the system, it can tell you when, when it surfaced for the first time on the internet. Because AI is able to um, study pictures and tell you that this picture was brought onto the internet this particular date for the first time. And it has been shared a number of times. All these things are there, you can tell how it's happening. So um, I've forgotten the sites that can be used. I have to research and then get those sites for you and probably communicate through the president and the vice so they can share some of these links with you. So if you have shared any picture before that you're not proud of, you don't want it to surface anywhere, you can submit these pictures, and if they share them through social media, it can come up as a picture that cannot be shared. You know? But the best thing is just to stop doing it henceforth. Hope I've answered you. Yeah. Oh, let's give it up for him. Thank you very much, sir. Please, any other question? Okay, my question. So, to talk me and Miss Lovia. Now, I'm a skillful girl. On top of that, I'm a spiritual girl. <laughs> and then, I've been going to class. And then they'll teach us mathematics. I don't understand. So, there is this gentleman in the class who and seems to understand. So, I approached him. Oh, sir, please, so, this A plus B minus C, I don't understand. Can you help? So, from there, oh, every now and then, we schedule time. Let's meet 9 p.m. each day. Let's meet 6 p.m. Oh, sir. It got to a point I started developing feelings towards this guy. Hey! Hey! Asamo, how will I handle this? And hey, I'm a spiritual girl on top. I'm a skillful girl. How do I handle it that I don't terminate my relationship with a guy also because he's teaching me? How do I do it? How do I put everything in, the, in one basket? <laughs> I will, I will explain based on experience. There is something I do when I enter my work environment. Any guy around me that I work with, I can't date. No matter, if you want to follow your feelings, you end up making great mistakes. We are all emotional beings. You are attracted to the person based on the thing the person is teaching you. So you are not in love. You are attracted because of what the person is offering you. Do you get it? And because, and there is something about we women. If you spend much time with one particular person, you start getting attracted to the person. That's why men are abusing that skill on us. A guy who will call you every day, consistently talking to you, maybe every 5 p.m. he calls, and maybe you might have a boyfriend or you might be married, but because that conversation is consistent, you have started getting accustomed to the person. So you always want to hear the person's voice. You always want to hear the person, but you are not making a rational decision. Do you get it? So there is a difference between the feeling and you being in love. Me, I know myself. I know when I spend so much time with this particular person, and maybe it's in the level, the kind of guy I want to be with. Uh huh. And I know if I spend much more time with you, this is what is going to happen. You need to know yourself. You know what makes you fall. Then you adjust and learn. We are all emotional beings. We are all vulnerable. Let's tell the truth. We are all vulnerable. You can fall for anyone. Even when you have a speck, 
The minute the person starts consistently talking to you on phone, the person will visit you, cook food for you, is always checking up on you. <laughs> Wife material, talk better. You see, you are always attracted to the person, but you need to make rational decisions. So you see, a lot of Christian marriages are breaking and divorcing because what the person saw, the person is attracted, enters into marriage. That is not what you are seeing. You are now seeing the real human being. He's throwing his socks here and there. He's doing other things. That is his being. Is this something you can manage? Is this something you can go along with? If it's not that, then... No, it means that you fell for something that is... Mommy said that is just temporal. Do we get it? So you need to know yourself what works for you and I just and I don't think I'll support anyone. You know yourself. If you know you'll be going there 7 p.m., 8 p.m. and your heart is not in place, one day when they start touching you, you don't like it, but you <laughs> you keep quiet because he's 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 teaching you what you want to know. So so let's all know ourselves. Togbe said it, uh, um Mr. Kichi said it, mommy also said it. No, when you get to know yourself, you know what works for you and what doesn't work for you. You put your mind, you subject your mind that I'm, yes, and set boundaries. I'm having this feeling. There is something I do, me. When I enter into a relationship, my office people know the way I, we sometimes speak some jargons in the office, the gentlemen in my office, the minute I tell them I'm in a relationship, bah, they enter into a certain automatic mode. We can't say this. You can't do this again. When you are in public space, you, there are certain things you can't do because she's in a relationship. And maybe the person, the person will see this and may not like it. It might be a red flag because of someone's involvement and not you. So you see, sometimes you also need to project what you want to see in relationship. When you are with someone, tell the person, I like you, but not in the manner you are seeing it. Project it as it is. Don't take anything away. Like mommy said, she, she didn't know. She was just receiving gifts. But <laughs> she was naive. But this was someone who felt the gifts will win her heart. Do you get it? So she sees her with other guys or another man and she's not cool with it. And he's not cool with it. But because she didn't explain boundaries, she didn't set certain priorities. Because she said she was naive by then. But 21st century, there's so much information, so much books, so much mentors around to help us. So you can't, you can't fail. You can't fail in this generation and make a bad decision. Yeah. So, like a failing gay, ideal college. Cho. Sir, please, like a sister. Oh, I just have to say boundaries. Please, when you are approaching someone for status, set boundaries for yourselves. Don't go beyond your boundaries. Know what you want. And that's all. That's the only thing. Even though you sometimes catch feelings, but then your boundaries are your priority. Okay? Yes, because you are in to learn. You are in to acquire something. So when you are using feelings for other things, then you are failing. Okay, thank you. Oh, let's give it up for them. Oh, our, our next uh, speaker also has something to say. Okay, so what I'll add to it is that... Um, it is true that when you are engaging with someone, you shouldn't uh, do stuff like that. But sometimes it's about getting to know people. Maybe the guy that is teaching you might actually have some very good qualities that you may discover. So it's about you, like you said, if you know what you want, you can find it in someone. And you can only know someone when you engage, when you talk more, are you getting it? For instance, how does this guy behave? When he's under pressure, how does he behave? When he gets angry, how does he behave? How does he treat his parents? Because at that point in time, he's just teaching you. He might not have any intention towards you. So he talks anyhow. When he calls his parents, how does he relate with his parents? His family. So all these things can be things you can pick from people when there is no intention. So even if later you catch feelings, you, could, you should be able to tell the kind of person you are catching feelings with. It is even better than somebody who just find randomly somewhere who just pretends to be a good guy. You don't really know him. You enter into it and then you are in trouble. So sometimes you can get to know people in school because you might have stayed with them for four years whilst you are doing your first degree and it might give you so much information about them. Yeah. Oh, let's give it up for him. Thank you very much. Please, any other question? Okay. So, Mommy said something when she was speaking. She said something about discovering your purpose. Okay. And then she made an example. 
When she made that example, I just remember something that happened to me and I realized this woman was really describing me. What example did she give? You remember she said something about, you'll be like you're in a, at a car station and then the mate is saying, everybody's going, let's go, let's go. You enter the bus with them. You don't even know where. Once upon a time, let's not go far. That is me. I was coming from Pond to Ho. <laughs> and then I don't know what happened. I thought I heard the uh, conductor say Ho, Ho. So I entered the car. <laughs> and then that day, I don't know what happened. I was just so glued to my phone. <laughs> we were going. The road was not looking like Ho. <laughs> it's really funny. The road was not looking like Ho Road. <laughs> now, the, ma- the uh, conductor said, it's time for Lori Feg. I brought out my money, so I, I realized people were just giving four CDs. And I was like, from who? To, from Pond to From Pond to who can be four CDs? It's a bit funny. From who to uh, from Pond to who can be four CDs? So I asked around, where are we going? And they said, we are going to Akosombo. That day, <laughs> I, I was so confused. Like the way the entire thing happened, it was up to now. When I think about it, I heard the person said "ho" in front of the car. What happened that I went to enter a Kosomboka? So when Mommy said that when you don't have a purpose, you just enter the bus with people, it really happened to me. Okay, so the closing remarks. Basically, we want to thank uh, everyone who made it present today. We are grateful that we said we'll begin at five. We couldn't begin because of some technical challenges. But then you, you began, continued, and ended with us. And we are grateful. I would want to thank the Lord Almighty for making this day a success. I would like to thank our speakers, Mr. Desmond, our father. <laughs> He's one of our fathers. He's one of the board members of She Media. So let's applaud him for still making it to this time. Miss Lovia, Mr. Togbe, and then Miss Mrs. Anoma. We want to say a very big thank you to them. And then to the entire She Media team, the executives, the president, the secretary, the organizers. Hey, a lot of things happened though. Both bus. But we thank God we all rode the boat to the shore. And we are grateful. And then to you sitting down here, we are very grateful. Hey, and mommy, I've not forgotten you. You are the top, 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 top. <laughs> God bless you for honoring this invitation also. And then to you sitting down over here, I believe you came here and then you learned. God bless you all for making it and making our program a success. And then our You Has Based TV. Hey, because of them, I'm showing on YouTube. You people applaud them for me. Hey. The entire world, see, even though the chairs looks empty, but the, the entire world is, is, is watching us. So please, God bless you all for making this a, a special one for us. And then, God bless you all. Thank you very much for honoring this. MC. Oh, please clap for me. Please clap for me. Thank you. Please, let's continue clapping for her. Okay, thank you very much. It's, it's so sad we are coming to an end. But then we will be expecting a lot of programs onward, and then we'll be calling on all of you. I hope you have learned something. You have really learned a lot. So please, next time we have a program, it could be next month, it could be in a week's time, it could be Next year, by this time, I'm sure we'll have a same program like this in February. So prepare your minds, prepare your hearts, and start telling your friends that there's a media group called She Media Ghana, and it is women that are in charge. Women are doing what men are doing with the help of God. So whenever there's a program, I want you to come and come and see them at work. Hallelujah. So we'll take our closing prayer from our prayer secretary. Lily, today you'll be our prayer secretary. Please come and give us the closing prayer. She's a big woman. Oh, people should clap bigger. Thank you. Um, please, shall we be on our feet? To all humility. Okay, we are praying. 
Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you so much for bringing us this far. We called on you when we started, and you have not disappointed us. You made the program so wonderful. We pray that even as the speakers have made eternal deposits, we will make good use of them. That we will even be shining light wherever we find ourselves. That in our skills, even in our life, love life, it will give glory to you. We pray even as we go out there, may you protect us and send us safely to our homes. We also pray that all those who have contributed to the success of this program in one way or the other, may you bless them and replenish all the resources that they have lost. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Please, let's do it better for him. Please, try and take the contact of 17 people before you leave here. 17. Get to know somebody. We heard that your boss.